from the Simonis Aramith Arena at the Sheraton Norfolk Waterside Hotel, Pat Fleming presents the 2022 International Open. Thank you. Great. Thank you. The International is brought to you by Accustats, and it's proudly sponsored by the three best companies in the industry, Diamond Billiard Products, Simonis Cloth, and Aramith, and we thank them so much for their continued support of this event. Okay, we're getting down to the end here in the Bigfoot 10 ball. This is the third quarterfinal match. The next matches will be the last quarterfinal. That will give us our players for our two semifinals at four o'clock and six o'clock, the final later this evening with the time to be announced. So with that being said, let's introduce our competitors. From Spain, this gentleman is the reigning US Open nine ball champion. And in a very short period of time, he will make his inaugural appearance on Team Europe's Moscone Cup, sponsored by Predator, Ecotisa, and DS Billiards. He's known as La Ferrari. Please welcome Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. His opponent's from Germany. This gentleman is the defending 2021 Bigfoot 10 Ball Challenge champion right here at the International and he will be making his sixth appearance on Team Europe's Moscone Cup. These guys are teammates shortly, not today. He's sponsored by Predator, Gabriels, and Andy Cloth. Please welcome the killer, Joshua Filler. All right, gentlemen, good luck. Your official timekeeper is John Baker. I'm gonna send it up to the comm box now to John Schmidt and Jeremy Jones. Well, thank you, Kenny, and welcome to the 2022 International 10 ball division here on the Bigfoot table. It's FSR and Joshua Filler. Like Kenny said, this is one of our last two quarterfinal matches to get to the semis. I'm Jeremy Jones, joined by John Schmidt. What do you think, John? Oh, gosh. I, I as a pool fan myself, um, what more could you ask for? Two young Lions in their prime wanting to win this event down deep in it. Uh, FSR is coming off winning a U.S. Open a month ago, so talk about momentum. And, uh, and of course, you know, anytime you get picked for your, your first Moscone Cup, you maybe feel a little more pressure to perform and look good. Uh, but I'll tell you something about him. He's a very fast-paced player, super talented, and extremely likable, congenial, friendly, affable guy. Everybody likes him. He's hard not to root for. And uh, Joshua kind of feel the same about him. He's a great guy, and I'm a fan of both of theirs. So this will be fun to watch. Yeah, and both of them, even though, you know, what they make appear pressure-free, we know pressure's there, but you, you probably can't tell with these two at times. Uh, yeah, good probably point. as much as any two on the tour. Yeah, that's a good point. They make a living out of um, dealing with pressure, and uh, there's an art to it. To play like you practice is um, not everybody can pull it off, but these two seem to have mastered it. Yeah, and it goes back to, you know, it's all opinion based on what you think is a better kind of mentality, or, but I'm a big believer in. You know, with these two, of course, they they look at what they're doing. They use that brain. But I think their biggest asset is staying in the flow of things and not minding being, having to recover a little bit here, a little bit there, and, and staying a little bit more loose rather than stressing so much from shot to shot. I agree completely. Very accurate observation by one of the best in the game. You... Um, you would be considered, you know, when I watched you play, as methodical and, and thoughtful and careful. And there's a time and place for that. And then these guys play almost like the way a shortstop just grounds a ball and throws it to first. He's not thinking. It's instinct. And, and that works, too. And the trick is to find out what works best for you and go with it. And these two um, are not afraid to pull the trigger and go. Yeah, and... Uh the one thing, like for myself, I mean, uh, these are heady guys. I mean, yeah, they sure. use their brain. Right. I mean, that's that's really what has gotten them probably even further in the game um, than most. And also, 
not just having a tournament here and there, having an entire year, year and a half, two right. years of just incredible play. But I think what it is is, is you know, use your brain the way you feel, the way you feel comfortable using it, and then separate. That's the key. You know, once you get down on the ball, you got to become that loose shortstop you were talking about right. and just swing the cue. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, so, they definitely – just because they play quick don't mean they're not thinking and they're yeah. not cerebral. They're very smart players with very high pool IQs, and uh, I would be hard-pressed to ever see them shoot a shot that I disagree with. I, I learn when I watch guys like this. They're always doing something very smart to steal a, steal a game here and there. Yeah, and no, I just – like for myself, I had to remind myself of that a little bit. You know, there's time to think, and then there's – as soon as you get down, you start playing the game right. a little more. You know, that's yeah, the play yeah, side of things. that makes sense. So it uh, keeps the swing loose, and these two uh, usually do it. Yeah. And it's pretty impressive uh, match in, match out. Now, they were practicing before the match and looking at each other's phones and smiling and playing opposite-handed. And, I mean, they're good buddies. They're going to be Moscone Cup teammates. So that's kind of an interesting dynamic. I, for me, I always struggled if I drew somebody that uh, I had a little bit of maybe history with or, or disagreement during a match. It's, it's kind of fun to play somebody that you consider your pal. Other yeah, and I think, I think it's just a little more of what, what it is today for the professional players. You know, it's not a personal thing. Right. There are some rivalries. Sure. Uh, some are built inside the arena. Some are built outside the arena mm -hmm. uh, with the fans and whatnot. And, and just history. You know, history makes rivalries more than um, maybe two guys not liking each other so right. much. You know, that's just the buildup, right? And uh, playing a lot of important matches, that's, that also creates a rivalry. But sure. I was thinking about it this morning. Woke up a little earlier than I really wanted to, to be honest. <laughs> uh, but I was thinking about our juniors. And, you know, I've talked to Eric Roberts here this week, um, Joey Tate, uh, who else? Uh, Payne McBride. Um, and it's amazing how great these kids' mental game is overall because they've all lost. Uh, they all admitted they didn't play very well in a loss, but you wouldn't know it. They realize, you know, they're absorbing and, and they yeah. really just kind of feel like more of the professional player today right? Um, in today's game. He got a little funny here. I might let the stroke out here drawing the ball one rail cross. He can avoid the 10, I believe, anyways. Looks like he's going to slide one rail for the side. Ooh. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, he's just nice going to have to make a bit, a little bit of a shot here on the 10. This is a touchy shot to win the first game, but I do like the fact that the cue ball can fall to the back rail here. Nice shot there. <laughs> FSR. You know you're playing good when your nickname can be FSR, and we all know who you're talking about. It's like being Madonna or something. Like that. You're playing great when a little nickname, and the whole world knows he's really – thrust himself into the forefront of people's minds and pool by winning that U.S. Open. We've all known he's a great player for years, but this is uh, really, really going to make him a household name. Yeah, and he kind of just, in the last year and a half or so, not only, you know, probably getting out even more than he did before, I think he was all, always had the offense. I think his tactical has come along, but it's not so much... I think any one of those things, but it's more of just um, eliminating the mistake at the wrong time. You know, sure. like, you know, he's fooling with the top guys all the time when he's playing, really doesn't play small events. You know, the Euro Tour is not the biggest financial events, but they're tough fields. Oh, yeah. Um, so I think just the last year and a half, he, like I said, he's eliminated that big mistake um, that comes usually at the wrong time. Well, something I find interesting in pool that, that I don't see in other sports, like he just won the U.S. Open, the toughest tournament in the world, and people will say things like, he's got potential now, or I'm seeing good things. <laughs> like, like, I don't know how much more you have to do to be considered an absolute top monster player. In my opinion, he's as good as anybody breathing, and uh, sometimes the balls are going to let you win. He's up against a killer here with Joshua, but uh, man, well, he's, he's playing great. 
those comments to me are more about the pe- person making the comment That's than right. about FSR. That's right. Uh, oh, kind of you know. Yeah, absolutely. A, it's like a fair weather fan kind yeah. of thing until he wins. They're right. not going to give him maybe the credit he deserves. Cause, That's right. And just just look at other sports, you know, that will have like 35 tournaments a year, 40 tournaments right. a year, like golf, right? It's still so impossible or not hard for guys to get one win. Exactly. And we play uh, – yeah, four events a year, and when you well, don't win they an play event, a bit more yeah, than that. Yeah, but, yeah. but 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 we like, have really like what we call four to six really huge events, right. you know. And so it's just hard to win. There's only right. one guy that's going to do it. That's right. It's probably oh, sure. something that's going to change because stats and different things are coming more and more. But even top tens aren't talked about, uh, you know, in a reference uh, to team sports. Oh. You know, we did well. We made the playoffs oh, this year. Right. You know, we didn't win the championship, but we're moving in the right direction. Where, yeah, where pool it really is about number one. Yeah, but I think that is going to change overall. Yeah, you get a top ten in this event. I mean, that's yeah, you've amazing. done well. You've done amazing. You know, well, basically, you put yourself probably four or five shots away from the guy that has won it. Exactly. Uh, you know, first and fifth. Usually, it's just a. Yeah, a roll here and there, a shot or, here or and there. an error here and yeah. there, not a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's got to play for a combo, and he may not be able to get as close to it as he wanted initially, um, just because he got a little flat. He's a little cueing, a little funny. He may get into this though. Come up by the side. Oh, he he took a lot of distance. I might have played a little more high ball there rather than spin. Yeah, for more angle, so you could. I'd like to get over by the side right. if I could and come right. one rail cross on this combo. Now he's gotten it a little funny. He's going to play for the five to move out to his right to the other pocket maybe. Yeah, but he's got to go forward Oof. there. There could be a kiss on the five just depending on the speed on the cue ball. If he drags it super light, I think the five could get in a bad spot. Oh, wow. like, oh boy, what right. a shot. Great touch. He's coming out of the gate playing awesome. Looks like he can cheat it, get to the side rail. Very nice. Now this is kind of interesting, Jeremy. What do you like here? I mean, if you if you nine goes in the side easy. Yeah, would you play for the nine in the side? Okay. Yeah, I would get make sure I get the angle to either come two rails across or yeah, you know, a comfortable kind of sliding out is okay. all. Okay. I would definitely draw to the left of the nine myself. Yeah, my first look, I thought the nine in the side was kind of sharp, but yeah, it does well, play in the he side. He can play the angle here. I uh-huh. didn't realize that was available. I thought he had to push on right. it more and possibly get straight in. This is fine. Yeah. And the 10-footer can't do anything but wonders for these guys as far as the nine, nine ball event, in my opinion. Right. Really got to let the stroke out here. You can't get away with babying the ball. Yeah, I don't want to draw a guy in the nine ball tournament that just that goes deep in this and has played on a 10-footer and made a ton of money, and now you're playing him a match over there on the nine-footer. You're not even in the money yet, and he's just been tuned up on this thing for three days. You're up against it. John, I'm trying to figure out the guy you do want to draw in the tournament. Booger and Stinky. <laughs> Not the fire dragon like last night. <laughs> yeah, the fire dragon you told me got beat. Yeah. Uh, they're yeah. late by Alp, and oh, Alp's Alp never out of it. Great. He's undefeated in the nine ball. He had a nice win over Thorsten. It was a heck of a match, 10-8 to eight last night. Justin Martin, fine young player from Wilmington, North Carolina. He's in action against another great player. Jesus Atencio. They asked me who, right before this match, one of the crew asked me who I thought had the best uh, fundamental slash stroke kind of thing. And I said, well, you got to put Fetter up there with the routine and, yeah. and whatnot. But I, I truly believe and just, you know, strokes a lot of like what you like as well. Mm-hmm. But I like Jesus's stroke the best. I think it repeats the best. I think it's the most accurate. I think it's the most powerful as far as effortless. Um, wow. Yeah. yeah that's I think he's got the biggest upside. Okay. And don't get me wrong. It's just like anything else. Uh, percentage points, in my opinion, above anybody. If if 
if that. And this is what I saw so far with this today, is none of the, the racks, the balls have broke like they're supposed to. We've had a little bit of 10 ball movement. Uh, the ball's not threatening the sides. The four reeler's not coming out hot. Right. Um, you can see a little frustration in Josh Filler's face. Yeah, uh, you know, if you're not you got to put those balls in that, that rack, and it works great, and then give it a little nudge forward to freeze them up. But that 10 ball should not be flying out of the rack like that. So um, No, that's a, a telltale sign, yeah, right? maybe a gap somewhere. We're all human. And plus, on a 10-footer, you're leaning way out to rack the balls. It would be easy to overlook a little gap if you weren't careful. Okay. A little touchy here. He could chop the one towards the two, come, you know. Try and use the 310. Yeah, I like Coming that. over to the left side rail. Not the biggest area to drop behind, but it's decent. Boy, I think it's I think it's a nice shot. I like it. You're yeah. talking about just cut the one over by the two and try yeah. to come around behind it's the just tent. a little sure. rolling left English. Sure. You up. could play it thick and run the ball. Yeah. I mean, you'd be up 2-0. I he, like that, too. He played it. Now, this is the type of shot that with so many balls there, he's going to give up an offensive shot. Mm -hmm. I thought just the subtle one because you're not giving up the offense even if you give up a little piece of the That's ball, right. right? That's right. For sure, Josh. I mean, let's say he ran out here. You'd be pretty sick that you didn't just drip over there behind the tent. Yeah. He was going for more of the devastating hook. Right. Man, what a tough shot this is. Down 2-0. Got to start with this. Beauty. Wow, what a shot. And I think he simplified it just because of the 5-6. Right. Uh, you know, Maybe not try to do too much on that first shot. It's going to be difficult unless he can get onto the three to bust open the, that, the five right. six. Oh, I he's think ducking. he's playing safe here, yeah. Look at this smart little shot here. Very wise. Now he should hit this. I think he's got a gap between a 6-7 to get to the side rail. I think, anyways. Almost got him froze to that 5. So you think he's trying to go two rails here, Jeremy, and clip off the side of the 2? I think that's all he has is go, two rails, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Might make this now. Yeah. He's got to elevate just a skosh. Oh, he went, oh, he went it right at 100 miles Ten ball. Ooh. Not, not a bad result. Pays to hit him, especially yeah. on the ten footer. Yeah, that's right. It's amazing how often somebody's hooked, they hit it, and you're hooked. Well, early in the rack, that's why you know when you're sitting kind of on the fence to where, you know, you can go for a shot that's, you know, maybe got a little cover, a little separation, whatnot. Right. I be I'm a little more aggressive early in the rack, uh, unless the safety's really good because. There's so much traffic. That's right. You know? I agree completely. If you make the shot, you're good. And if you miss it, yeah, you got chances to hook them maybe. Yeah, you can't. I mean, you got to pick your poison when yeah. it comes to that. You can't just do it every time. But nope. like I said, when you're on the fence, sometimes early. Okay. He's just going to ice this, it looks like. Not really try to do much. Just roll the ball in and again. Oh, how perfect oh, did he get to bust open yeah. the five six? I think he got really he's nice. He's a little, isn't he? A little thin on the three. Oh, but he's, do, he's he can gotta make it. Shoot this, oh, he's yeah. got to shoot it. Yeah. I mean, the four is over the corner. I mean, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like pretty hard luck to get snookered here. Oh yeah. And if you do get snookered, it's got to be a really tough one to not get out the four some kind of way. I think he's supposed to shoot. Yeah, here. he's got to shoot here. I think if anything, it's just a thin cut. That eight he, out of ten at yeah, least right? to make it. Oh, and he let up uh -huh. a little, and it pulled. And the funny thing is, how did he not hit the 5-6? Did he double kiss one of them? I was watching the uh, three. I think he three. did. He must have. The camera was in my way a little bit, but I can't imagine he didn't hit those two balls. I think he double kissed the five. Okay, so Josh, you know, I think if he could somehow get to this side rail over here near the four, he may be able to pull the cue ball two rails at the five kind of calmly between the seven nine. You know, if he could get over, like, say, shoot the three and pull the ball two rails between the 9-10, try and get over to this side rail here, that's what I would do. do you see where he's going? Do you, do you think the billiard on the 5-6 is... It like, might be it playable, too. It might be playable. 
Yeah, that's fine. Because it looks like it's at least worth taking a peek at. I can't tell what he's thinking here, but. Well, the thing is here is if he does shoot the shot I was talking about, pulling the ball two rails at the five, you're not going to come in here too hot. Right. You want to come in here like, uh, you know, maybe exactly bump it open a little, maybe not. I think he was trying to get Look there. Look at this here. Okay, he's happy. He nudges the six out of the way. He can play some kind of safe. A lot of options here. Be interesting to see what he chooses. I kind of like flicking off the five and spinning down behind the eight ten and over to the left rail and just barely moving the five. Yeah, you think that's difficult. That's, not, that's difficult, isn't it? The five's going to want to nudge out. This is what I would have looked at. Just shaving the five, trying and to go, use the seven and, and distance. And all the way. Oh, I like that even better. Because yeah. the six is funny. Yeah, you, I you like that You know what I mean? Better. I mean, if you keep it simple here, don't yes. let yourself get locked up, yes. you know, by giving them an easy shot. The six is oh, going to be funny to get on, beautiful. even if you don't get the snooker. Yeah, so. nice call, Jeremy. That's a, that's definitely a better <laughs> shot than what I was thinking. The distance on this table, too, is so viable. Well, the the plus in that shot is accuracy. It was at a premium because mm -hmm. he was so close to the five. You know, he could that's really right. control the hit on the five, the, the, mm -hmm. the speed on the five. Yeah, he did well with it, too. He really needs to win this game. A 3 nothing deficit would be a, a lot to overcome, even for the great Joshua Filler. And it's funny when you come to tactical play. Talked about this with Shaw uh, the other day that, you know, sometimes when it comes to the – oh, unlucky there. Wow. Uh, sometimes when it comes to more conventional safeties, yeah. Shaw and Filler both can kind of miss those, not necessarily miss – seeing it but maybe not miss hit the mark as often as some other players okay. but when it comes to unique safety something you're not going to have not, something that's not so conventional yeah. they're some of the best oh, yeah. kind of like a rodney morris back in the day yeah rodney when the ball really great. sat funny his talent could could do so much yeah yeah that makes sense i remember um yeah, I think of Shaw and Filler as great safety players, but that's interesting to hear Jason say that. Um, yeah, playing safe is a big part of the game at the world-class level. That is for sure. Yeah, and sometimes the looks you don't get very often <laughs> right. are the ones that uh, obviously can get the best of you, but they do also have a huge impact. Yeah. Okay, looking Filler to get on the board here. Probably the best stunner of the ball I've ever seen. Yeah, he does stun it into position a lot. nicely. He likes yeah. the light stun a lot. Yes. Using the Predator Z3 shaft, 11.85 millimeters, and boy, he can spin that ball around with confidence. He told me, I asked him, why'd you go from the 12.4 back to the 11.8? He goes, ah, oh, the spin shots, I just feel so good spinning the ball. Got a lot of one-loss side matches going on in the nine-ball event here at noon. That'll continue in the early part of the afternoon here and then some winter sides this evening. When we looked at round two of the winter side, how many great matches? Well, it's just going to get better oh, yeah. <laughs> on to the third round. Had a couple Americans with an unfortunate loss last uh, night. Earl Skyler 10 9, yep. Earl 10 9. Yeah, Earl Sky was ahead 9 5. Nine, Earl three. was ahead oh, 9 3. Oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah, didn't I really, didn't uh, he made a, a, a little error, but didn't make a ton of errors really, yeah. mainly like a one and a half kind of error thing. Tough shot he missed down the rail. Mm -hmm. um, I saw that. But both of them were playing great. We had some other Americans get beat yesterday, but. Guys are hanging. Yeah, Earl. Uh, Earl was leading in his match in Los Hill Hill, and Earl uh, was a complete gentleman and shook the guy's hand, said good shooting. Oh yeah. And just uh, gave him a fist bump, Hill Hill, before the the final game, and huge crowd. The whole building was over there watching it. No, Earl. I mean, it was exciting. A lot of people don't realize that. Like, all right. So say when we used to play, where we had to rack for each other. Mm -hmm. You know, that at times could be a little sticky, right? So 
Earl, I never had to check his rack once. Uh, once I, well, I say once I, after the first match of playing him, you know, I just kind of had heard he would always great with, with anything on the table, of course, racking the balls, you know, call fouls on himself, whatever it may be. And then I played him one match, and again, I never had to check the rack. Well, he has deep-seated beliefs on the way things should be, and when they're not that way, that's when he goes on his his little tirades. But it's because he feels that the table should play a certain way, or the the game should be ran a certain way, and so. Um, yeah, a lot of people get the know. feeling he has passion for just himself. He is, oh and that's, no, you know, he it's has, passion for the game. Yeah, man, the sport, absolutely. Yeah. All right, tough roll out here. You gotta roll out super difficult no matter what it is, but like here. This is where the difference if you're if you're feeling right and thinking right, you're supposed to take this on to roll the cue ball up behind the three, I think, anyways, yeah. versus let FSR do it. Yeah. They can certainly get away from you. Right, yeah. You know there's some execution here to, is to he, get Is he behind. banking this three rails or something around and following his ball? Yeah, he, this is what I oh, he's playing behind the well, look six. At this, this is gonna hurt. Here. Yeah, not what he was looking for there. And I do understand uh, what he felt there. That was probably the right shot, to be well, honest with you. Now I look at it. Well, he had coverage with the three and, and the six. Yeah, two just bullets got away there. from him. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's playing the percentages. He knew I had one of two balls could could help me, and neither one did. Yeah, and the shot selection's one thing. I was kind of talking about you got to take it on yourself, and yeah. and I think you know even though he sold out. I think he went down the right way. I do too. Yeah, I think that was the play, and uh, you're just not going to pull it off every time. A little shy of the mark there, and not saying it's a big deal, but just a little more testy on the ten footer. That's right. Just just enough angle to where you can't see the pocket as good peripherally as you can if you're just over another inch or two. I feel he'll make this, but this is just enough angle to cause you issues sometimes. Good shot. And then again, what impresses me all the time is he really doesn't quiver with the swing much. Nope. You know, he goes ahead and swings. It may not always work, but it obviously works way more often than not. Right. But, but that's a big part of uh, of of actually winning the tournaments. Yeah. You know, because you have right. matches like this where you. Not tentative with the swing, but can you do it throughout the entire event? Yes. Well, I always lean on the golf. And now, I mean, you look at some of the golfers that had the quirky, strange swings. I mean, Torino didn't change his swing to look pretty for Jack Nicklaus. He went out there and did it the way he did it, and he could make it work under immense pressure. And, you know, FSR, I mean, he just, he just does it his way. It's great, and... Um, no, he trusts it. I like that. He's got great fundamentals, yeah. though. I mean, really straight stroke, good yeah. timing, yeah. a lot of power. Well, I mean, an example in pool would be like a, a Bustamani. There's a guy that 30 years ago would have been very easy for somebody to convince him, like, well, you can't do it that way. And he's like, yeah, I know. I'm in the Hall of Fame now. <laughs> Worked yeah. out okay. You know, and and, uh, and you. You hold the cue a little different, but you knew there was a reason because yeah. you're left eye dominant. You didn't worry about somebody changing you. No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's the worst thing you can do. Now, if your fundamentals are, you know, like hideous and you are you need a lot of help, that's one thing. But uh, I think trust in your game and your cue and the way you do it is big at the top level because somebody, somebody always wants to come up and tell you, like, oh, you know, you need to change something. And I've fallen – Fallen for that too a couple times. Well, I've tried to change. To, I mean, I come out here. I mean, I I want to hit it like Chang and then like Filler, and then <laughs> I have to hit it like John Schmidt. I mean, I don't know any other way. Now look at this going to the side rail. I would have had wow. to give it the break one more time at least before I did this. Right. It's because just looking at the entire event, the balls have broke really well um, as a hold. Yeah, I wouldn't have gone to the uh, side rail just yet. I talked to him about that yesterday. I said, why did you go to the side rail using, a, using the Accurac? And he says, yeah, the balls just weren't breaking good, and so I just thought I'd mix it up. But, I mean, the way I saw him break last night, you know, um, man, I, I think he would do better breaking from the center. Yeah, I think just from what I've seen, um, if you've asked, asked everyone that lost – 
I don't think anyone would say anything about the break that no. cost them. I've seen everyone break well. Yeah. You know, now you're not going to make one every time, yeah. but but you yeah, know, the balls are rushing towards the side. Yeah, the four exactly. railers are threatening. I mean, stick with that for a minute. What do you think here, Jeremy? It looks easy to like cross it with inside to me, but come down under the nine. Yeah, and it the looks four. like it, anyways. Yeah, the outside. He's going to try to maybe peel away. Yeah, oh, like he this. did it like that. I yeah. like that. That yeah, was that's laying what I was saying with inside. Yeah. Yeah, nice. And that speed of the middle, of the in rail. That's the one you got to practice getting to a lot. The middle. Uh huh. Not saying it's always the place, but it's like a. A standard foundation for coming to the yeah. end rail with a cue ball. And it is a lot of times the place to go. Oh, nice Almost like one pocket when you don't know anything better. Yes. yes. Middle of the end rail is a pretty good spot. Sure is. Yeah, if you're feeling queasy, just get there and you usually and, can survive. Yeah, it cuts off more angles. Uh, it's harder to play position off balls from up table from the middle of the end rail percentage-wise. Of course, every shot's yeah. unique. But. Yep. Okay. Might want to cut this a lot, try and go into the six with the cue ball off the side rail. I would think, anyways, yeah. cut the one towards the nine, maybe. Oh, he can get in between this four five. Oh, okay. Oh, wow, I didn't think he could do that. And he's fluked it. Look at man. this, he might fluke it in. No, Josh has got a shot to get started. Well, I know he could see it. I'm surprised he didn't duck off of that ball, just because look at what he was shooting at on the two. <laughs> well, maybe not that bad of a shot. Yeah. A little jacked up, though. Good shot to get started. Yeah, first time I saw Josh Filler was right here in this room, uh, back on the corner table. Yes, when he, I remember when he beat the beach. SD, yes, SDB. I watched that too. And I knew right then I was like, "Wow!" Because you could just tell. Sometimes you could see somebody win a match and it's an upset, and you can see, but you could just tell watching him. I'm like, "This guy's a different animal here." Well, I went and asked some Euros immediately. Um, the three or four are really like their opinion. Mm -hmm. They all said the same thing. Yeah, this yeah. is the best player in Europe, the next best player in Europe, like the guy wow. that's coming next. Wow. And that was actually, though, show you how awesome SVB is. Didn't slow him down that year. That was the last year he won the U.S. Open from the one loss side. Yeah. Could stun here, it looks like? Or does he have to draw into the eight, maybe? Or? It looks like he's stunning right between. Oh, oh okay. he could. He was no. straight. Oh, he got oh. a kick there. He got a kick. Yeah, oh. he gets that a lot, though, with the soft one going forward. Almost like maybe a hair of a let up, you know. Because yeah, most of the kicks, that. right, are at the lighter speed, John, right? Most kicks, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the lighter so, speed. And what I've found is... A lot of times that you're not really accelerating the cue, and uh, the object, the cue ball is just kind of rolling on its own, and instead of you putting that spin on the ball. So yeah, I don't think it's a coincidence that no. the, most kicks are at a, a light speed. Yeah, that was really bad time to get one of those, man. Well, he did well to play a nice safety. Yeah, you want to kick firm here, but. I was wow. going to say it makes you shot. less accurate. I like that speed what to where you're going to keep accuracy. Wow, what do you got here? Looks like he can bank the seven straight back. Okay, I like and just, that. And coast towards the ten with right. the cue ball. Oh boy, and if you could even – I don't think you can get down behind the ten. The uh, seven would be – would it you be able to get down under the ten? I think, That'd I be think, nice, I right? I think you could. You boy. might get him over the ten. That would be ideal. You might use the nine, depending on where you bank the seven to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Bank the seven right where his left hand is and let the cue ball come forward. That'll okay. work on a five by ten. It's like, hey, it's your shot, buddy. Hey, what did we just talk about? <laughs> when you don't know anywhere better to go, the middle of the end rail yep. is the most awkward place. It sure is. I mean, I wouldn't want this shot. No, and this is where you make... If you're comfortable, chop off the left side of the seven with left English. Go two rails at the ten and see That's if the right. nine ball helps you out. 
And you can tree top him on the 10. You can oh, make five the 10. By 10. Yeah, you can get behind it. I like it. I like exactly yeah. what he did. Look at this. See how the nine's covering up oh, the pocket, what though? A shot. He almost made the 10. I almost yeah, got him, and, but and if, you see that? You know, yeah. you got a lot of things working for you, and it's very doable. Yeah, and if FS, FSR makes this seven ball, I just say good shot. Exactly. I don't even know that I would shoot at this. And that's just percentage play. That's the right play on the nine footer Absolutely. as well, by the way. Yep. Agreed totally. Now you have to execute pretty decent, but the, the good thing about that shot is your room for error. It's not like the seven can get the seven can get in a lot of places that really help you. The cue yeah. ball can get in a lot of places that really are working for you. Well, he's shooting here. Well, it's I hard to shoot. bank the seven back down with the ten being there. He yeah. moved the ten into a kiss shot position. I was gonna say, oh look at this. Oh wow. my god. I mean, I don't think he was playing that, right? He was playing no, the seven. No, he wasn't playing yeah. it, but he may oh, have known yeah. it was a possibility. Well, I can't imagine he played that combination. If he did, like, whoa. Well, there's a saying to that mm -hmm. that I like that I always forget. I'll think of it in a second. That's strong to, over, I mean, to miss the seven and make the ten. Like, wow. Yeah, we're going to. Let's get another look at that. Two railer on the seven at the ten. Definitely shooting at the pocket, you would I, think. I think so. I mean, ooh, that was a nice roll there if he was playing a seven at the pocket and made the ten. And um, Josh is going to have to dig deep. Things aren't going his way. Well, I think he's got to look at FSR, break the balls first, and go yeah. back to the center. Agreed. I don't like questioning anything that Josh decides out there on a pool table, but I think when you're using a great rack, that Accu rack, I mean, break from the center. The balls just break like they're supposed to. You got a chance to, to get the one down by the corner. Yeah, especially you know? at this uh, deficit right here. Yeah. You know, you need to have a, a break and run, and not saying it's huge. It's only four to one. Yeah. I mean, you're really only one game of off of – after five, the closest you can be is 3-2, right? So mm -hmm. luck favors the bold. Yeah. That's what the, or, or the aggressive. or Yeah. You know, Fortune yeah. favors the brave. Yeah, that's stuff. right. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the one the I'm saying, looking right? for. Fortune favors the brave. Yeah. There's a lot no of ways to No wonder I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> it is true, though. Yeah, that's right. Good things can happen if you if – you Yeah, the bold – Fortune favors the heart. The yeah, the fortune. Aggressor. Yeah, that's right. Kenny's going to be real careful here and make sure to get those balls racked tight. It's very just because you're using a great template like that Accurac doesn't mean you can just chuck them up there. There's a little science behind it. You got to put them in there, and it says right on the rack. Now push all eight balls forward, and it works amazing. Yeah, I think if you keep touching them, yeah, uh, is where you have a problem. Yeah, that's yeah, that could be yeah, that could be bad. Yeah, I just load the eight, rock them forward where That's they right. set, and then add the back ball if it's nine ball or add the two if it's uh, ten ball. Yeah, that's right. I don't think you're going to see FSR go the side rail. Boy, how's his momentum? Just won the U.S. Open. Just made the Moscone team. Leading Josh Filler 4-1 deep in this event. I mean, just a dream scenario for this young, great player from Spain. Oh, dry break here. They did break nice. They broke better. The 10 didn't move. Yeah, I mean, what a year. I mean, I mean he started right. off uh, winning the Derby. Um, nine ball event. I think he won a Euro Tour or two. Yeah, what a year. Him and David won the World Cup of Pool for Spain in the doubles. Huge event. Man. Um, wow, nice shot. Second uh, second in the Europe, uh, UK Open to Josh Filler. Could have won that final, by the way. Yeah, Was people. Right pe there in it. People like to bring up, well, there's no money in pool. I mean, he's going to make like 200000 this year. I'd say he's having a pretty decent year. To yeah. Me. <laughs> it's growing, too, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Predator's doing huge things. Matchroom's doing huge things. AccuStats, Productions, puts on amazing events. I mean, there's opportunities for the great players out there for sure. Well, I commend the companies as well. Yeah. I mean, they're doing a, so much more for the players. Agreed. Uh, 
It's not just eight, eight guys, seven, eight guys right. got sponsors. It's what? a bunch. What a shot he's got to come with here, three rails for the side. Oh, wow. And he's still got to get on the five, so if he ends up on the rail and short. Wow, right. what a shot that was. Yeah, yeah, he's going to run shot. into the 10, maybe make the 10, and come off the 10 for Can shape. Can he draw by the 10? Can he? Because he's got to get shape. I mean, if he runs into the 10, I don't know if he gets there unless he can hit the top of the right. 10. Right. Yeah, come right off the he top can hit of the it. Top, yeah. Oh, this would be a cool looking shot right here. Be aggressive bit. here. Oh. Why did he lay up? Oh. I thought he would go the rail and out a little bit. That's why uh -huh. I said I thought he would be aggressive there. This is like about for a shot that's a foot away from the pocket, about oh. as tough as it gets. Oh yeah. And you're shooting at that speed that if you miss it, it's just gonna stay by the pocket a lot well, of times. You almost have to apply yeah. the inside, don't you? Man, this is so tough. I don't know. Oh, Looks he's like he, going outside. What a he's shot. He's going to be on the rail again, though. <laughs> Boy, what an out this would and be. And he's going to be right in between the seven. Does it play in the side? Because he can't get to the corner. I don't mm, think he can. Yeah, he'd have to spin his cue ball with left, which just makes you miss the six too often. I don't know, Jeremy. I don't know if he can get around for the seven in the side. I don't know if it really even goes in Man. the side, looking at the R overhead. I guess it does. He put the inside. Yeah, he overcut the makes ball. You, makes you miss the. You just even as great as he plays when you shot you shoot that with spin, frozen off the rail from nine feet away. I mean, good luck. When they go in, it all looks good, but that's a very low percentage shot. But uh, again, fortune favors the brave. I got to commend him for having the guts to even shoot it. it would have been very easy to try to duck there. Yeah, they definitely aren't ducking in that spot. Mm. Now Justin Martin now trails Jesus three to two. Alex Pagalon in action. He's tied at three apiece with his opponent, Yanni Uski. Finland. Wow, what a nice stroke Man, that you're was. You're not kidding. Real fluid. And that's why he got so much out of the cue ball. That's what people don't realize. It's not about how much spin you can, you know, put on the ball. It's how much spin you can keep on the ball through that collision on the object ball. That's what makes the cue ball move easily. Man, so that was a nice shot on the six. Jeez. It's kind of like swinging at 40%, getting 100% out of it. John, right. Versus a lot of guys really go at it and don't get much out of the ball at all. Well, he's playing – just outrageously good so far almost magical i mean and then that seven he missed he makes the 10 i mean you talk about a guy with some momentum josh can see it too he knows he's in big trouble early here i'm interested to see how he breaks the balls he may stay to the side of rails see an fsr dry break from the center here mm -hmm. this last rack wow what an out right there taking this match by the horns and um yeah, he's nobody to mess with. The year he's having, the confidence he's feeling. Just an absolute assassin with a pool cue right now. Everything's going right, feeling right. Yeah, and what Josh is thinking with that side rail break is not only maybe trying to make the one on the side and make balls, but keep FSR slowed down a little bit with maybe a tough rack, um, mm -hmm. you know, congestion maybe. If he doesn't make balls or doesn't get a shot, he's got to realize I don't think there's any slowing FSR down. Uh, I think he's got a break from the center trying to make some balls on the break and, and put a rack or two together, you know, when it's his break. Yeah. Well, what I kind of like to see, sometimes I, I – and I understand people like to build stars, and but I've noticed sometimes – people build up certain players and they really forget there's other great players like an FSR. I mean, here's proof. I mean, you know, here's a guy that just won the U.S. Open, but the social media is going to say, oh, well, Joshua Filler is the favorite and da, da Hey, man, this FSR is no joke, you know, and he's a great player too. And that's why winning tournaments is so tough because there's players that aren't quite household names that play so good. You know, it's not like Joshua Filler is the only great player out here. And, and it's easy to forget that sometimes. I see I see people kind of get, they latch on to a couple players, and I try to remind them, like, man, there's 20 or 30 killers out here, and this young man here is really something else, and he's giving Josh all he can stand. 
Yeah, and we'll talk about that more in a minute. The shot here, I like the the one rail ball, cut the one up, come one off the side rail with the cue ball at the two, trying to use the five and the two. I would go one rail under this ball. It's real natural. Yeah. It'll put a little side spin on it for you, so it'll creep up towards the two. It's just all a little speed control. Well, what a lot of fans don't realize is the difference in you know the upper echelon and what you would consider, which I consider FS. Wow, he hit a solid wow, what a shot. shot. Just perfect. Uh, and I consider him upper echelon. But even if you think there's a separation between Josh and FSR, and there may be. Yeah, it's not a Do you know how little it's it is? It's so small. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking about I was watching because I did, like I said, got up super early this morning. But uh, I was watching a little bit of the sports center, and they were talking about Odell Beckham Jr. and how all these teams need to go get him and whatnot. Well, he's coming off ACL surgery. He's not even healthy yet. And, you know, a great oh. Odell is one thing. But if he's off a little bit, what I'd rather he, have one of them other guys. You what know, is he, a quarterback? He's a receiver. But oh, my receiver. point is, even if he's a little better on paper and mm -hmm. his career, if, if he's off a little bit, he's sure. no better than them rookies, really. Sure. And the difference between players is so minute. Uh, well, as you know, a as a player, and you know, we're out here playing and watching or commentating, I mean, us – the pro players know who the real superstars are way before the public does. A lot of times, you know, people start talking about a player, and I'm like, I've watched that guy play for eight years. He's awesome. And so this is no shocker to me to see FSR thrusted into the position of Moscone Cup U.S. Open winner. I'm happy for him. Absolutely. And he's, and he's such a nice guy. God, I mean, could you be a nicer, more pleasant human yeah, being to deal dude. with? Yeah. Okay, he's trying to figure out the four ball right now, I think, more than the one to the two. Right. But oh, nice shot, Josh. Three goes going the side, has a big pocket with the nine. Now, he could play the three and off the nine in the side and drop down and open the pocket for the four in the side. <laughs> Very he could, observant. That's he, exactly right. He could follow down for the opposite side pocket. Um, should should get this position though to get on the four. He's in a good spot. Well, now I don't think mm. he can. I don't think he can get to the opposite side from there. He may have to play this ball off the nine. Right, and I think. Or does well, the four go between the seven? Yeah, that's eight? what uh, I'm wondering. Okay, I'm that not makes sure more yet. sense. Oh, look, I guess it does. That makes more sense. Boy, that's an optical illusion. Yeah, now he can open drawn off the six a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's no way we could have seen that from this angle. But even looking at the overhead, it's oh, like, he's, oh, oh. he's got an angle. He's yeah, going to stun goes. to the rail. And then, well, the six doesn't. Where does the six no, he's go? Gonna he's got to get on nice he's on the get five. An angle. Not a lot, but Man, enough. Going from the five to the six is going to be uh, a lot of work here. Try to put the cue ball right where he's standing. Oh, how'd he hit it? Nice shot. Killer filler. Like 10 feet of cue ball travel there. And you don't want him flying around the table. When he starts running around that table, just make out your will. I mean, he's he just is so tough when he gets rolling. He's going to need the extension here. Draw around the 10, couple rails. Take this deep to the corner. Bottom right English. Beautiful. Man, what a gutsy out right there being down 5-1. to one. Fantastic play. Joshua Filler gets back on the board now at five to two. After a dry break as well, and a really nifty kick safety from FSR, yeah. but didn't pay off this time. He'll be back at the breaking in in game eight. Here's our bigger 
National Beard Academy rack track. Five out of six to start. Filler picked up game number seven. Kenny Schumann, longtime ref and friend of Poole, doing a nice job. Out there gloved up like he should be, keeping the balls clean and polished so there's less skids and kicks, as they call them in Europe, which is really probably a more accurate way to word it. Long days for these players. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were, uh, what was it, from noon yesterday till 2 in the morning for all the players, AccuStats production crew, you and I and Mark Wilson. I mean, this is uh, quite an event. Yeah, something's going on with the rack for sure. Not saying he hit those his best. Yeah, none of the balls. Went. The 10 didn't move, which I know, is encouraging, but, something, but, but something's, something's, something's not right. Something's going on with the yep, rack for yep, sure. Yep. Um, Maybe, you know, as good as those are, I've found I need to change them every now and again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. You know, so. Yeah, they can get a little crinkled up or wrecked from, yeah. from being used so much. Doesn't look like he wants to attack, but we'll see. I think he's trying to get the cue ball under the 10. Uh, he cut it too uh -oh, much. Oh, cut that's it too common, much. Yeah. That's a common mistake on that shot, that overcut it. You're trying to promote a little cue ball movement. Right. Just gets away from you a little bit. He's he, left a one-two combo, yeah, I believe. Tough, but I mean, I mean, it's doable. You figure to hit the two. Yeah, he may have to yeah. jump a sliver of this ball. Oh, okay. And he can't use the short cue, but if it's just a sliver, it shouldn't be a problem getting over it. Maybe can swerve like a little, like level swerve kind of. Oh, I think uh, he's cueing right to it. Jay. Yeah, yeah, I think so. He's got a window. Yeah, he was looking to see if he made them both. Oh, oh, perfect. How would he be on the three? Which would have been ideal if he'd have made them both. Right. Now that five sure is a big ball coming off this end rail. It looks like a volleyball setting out there. You got to get past it to see the three. Yeah, here, just don't flinch. That's all. You'll get there. Oh, nice shot. And that's the one thing about the way the table's playing. You can use some side to check the uh -huh. ball. A lot of times the TV table is very difficult to do that. Right. It's so slick you can't check back into position. Yeah. yeah. If, if you're going away from the angle trying to check it back, it's um, not impossible. But you right. have to trust the bed a little more rather than the rail helping you. Right. Meaning you use a little less check and just hope, you know trust the faster bed rolling mm -hmm. into position. It's tricky, really. And that's the one thing, you know, sure. you played Moscone, so it's the one thing that Moscone, you almost have to remind yourself because you, just yeah. keep, I mean, we've tried. You just can't yeah. duplicate that table. Yeah. Yeah. You certainly have to, can't duplicate yeah. what you feel. <laughs> yeah. There's like more deflection and less swerve. Yeah. You can hit the ball thicker. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. you can do a lot of things. Play it. I, I tend to play it even last year from kind of nowhere with the four inch pockets. I still kind of play it. You know, like a, which I play a lot, like a seven foot position, real simple, mm -hmm. you know, kind of thing. But mm -hmm. I don't mind playing the ball up long, you know, on the slick table rather than trying to move the cue ball. The moving the right. cue ball can get difficult with inside yeah. or outside, yeah. actually. That's right. FSR looking to extend back to four games. And we're moving down the line in this match. So yeah, just the way playing. he's playing, you know, Filler's really got to capitalize on every yeah. inning, it seems like. Yeah, this is the way you have to play to beat Joshua Filler. You just have to play amazing, get a couple rolls, and FSR has done that so far. He would be beating probably anybody alive right now the way he's performed up to this point. Very impressive performance. Got a little more out of that, but mm -hmm. shouldn't be a problem. He can just kind of, he didn't even have to go the rail, I don't think. Yeah. 
Nice. He's a fellow Predator player making that 12-4 Revo sing out there. Pretty certain it's the 12-4. I'm not 100%, but it looks like it. Yeah, that Moscone Cup table, you know, emulating those conditions like you're talking about, that's um, that's key. Yeah, that's key. I mean, we've, yeah, cause that place we've gotten different. better for sure. Uh -huh. uh, it's just difficult to totally get it right, the same. You right, know? Looks like he's going to go to the side of rail. Man, Josh, break from the center, buddy. you got to make those balls on the side. Yeah, but, I mean, they haven't been cooperating, not only with him, but with his, his opponent that yeah. leads him by four games as well. Let's see what this 5-6 does. Well, well from the a, rail, it I don't come know. Close. They're not going to come close. Yeah. One on the side. Cue ball coming back with the two a little bit. I think the nine's going to get a little in his way. And it looks like it. And a very difficult push out. He may have to push out, just push towards the nine a little bit for the two rail kick underneath the two ball. You can't let him see the two any kind of possible way here. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm watching Ro Roland Garcia. I mean, he makes like three and four balls and straight on the one. I'm like, I think you got to stick with the, the tried and true. And, and, and if the rack's chewed up or something, let's get a new one. But, man, to go to the side rail, I... Again, I don't like questioning these great players, but I'm just not a big fan of breaking from over there. For years, everybody breaks in the center. The balls break amazing. You know, the balls go on the side, the four railers. And now it's like uh, just completely abandon that. I don't quite understand that. Well, I don't like letting them see this ball. No. Oh, no, you're going to end up a mile away here. Yeah, you're behind gonna, the five You're going to be behind the five and, and four and all that down there and the two over by the nine. Yeah, I agree, Jeremy. I think you're uh, taking the worst of letting FSR. Yeah, I would have had to roll out, here. like I said, just short of the nine and let uh, you know let him mm -hmm. pass back that two rail kick underneath the two. There's a lot of good things that could happen. Yeah. Now is this a little flat? A little I bit. I mean, the thing here, the five and eight and all that's so good. Uh -huh. I think you you. you you even don't have to the, get down to the four, right? You just well, get even if it. you're worried about where the two's going, yes. you can't pass this shot. I that's don't think. That's right. Just come down between the 5'10". But that's the thing. Yeah, there nice. there's so many good so things much. there. Yeah. Even if you got a little lucky, per se, quote, unquote, mm -hmm. percentages were on your side to oh, get lucky. Oh, totally, yeah. Yeah, I think and that's the one thing we do talk about with Josh at times is occasional rollouts here and there. That, But I think there's a... A vast amount of players these days that make some questionable rollouts. I think people over. I call it over pushing. I mean, they just push to like ridiculous spots that the other player goes, <laughs> "Go ahead." I mean, you want to make them think a little bit. If you've pushed it so difficult that the other player just doesn't even get out of their chair and says, "You shoot, you you've messed up." I think Josh there was just a little frustrated with the way the balls broke and didn't give the push out much thought, almost just out of like kind of frustration possibly because that push out. I mean, FSR's taking that a hundred times in a row and and playing safe on you. Yeah, I think that's worse than the other end of mm -hmm. things that you brought up, which oh, is, man. you know, your opponent says you push out and they immediately give it to you. Well, you probably made a mistake. Yep. But if you push out where you're never getting it back, that's uh, a bigger mistake. Oh yeah. Well, this is a testament to how great. FSR is playing too. I mean, to to frustrate Josh at all means you're playing incredible, and you can see by Josh's body language nothing's going right. And um, you know, FSR is just playing phenomenal, taking this match and just uh, earning it, taking it, not hoping to win it. And this is a funny shot here. Boy, you're not kidding. Is he playing this off the seven? Yeah, but he looks I don't, like, God, I don't think he can really wrap the corner without Ooh. really taking a chance. I think he has to come behind the three. Oh. Okay. Oh, he, oh, the seven was dead. Wow. Wow. 
he wasn't trying to make it. I don't it. think he was. Yeah, why would you try to make it and get the cue ball down there? Well, first little momentum shift. Um, what do you like here, Big J? Mm. Would you hook? Would you kick behind the two and kick it upstream down by the I might. three? I might. Right, with a high right ball? Now, if he can shoot the two into the six and come three rails around down underneath the three, I love that. But it seems like the corner pocket is in play. Watch he, this crafty little shot here, folks. Oh, well, he really crossed me up there. He was trying to bank the two uh -huh. back behind the eight towards the five and all I that. I liked it. Wow, that shot yeah. didn't come up very often. No, it does not. <laughs> it does not. He did pretty well with it. Wow, Josh does not have any options here. I'd love to hear your thoughts here. Well, the only offense I see is really the two off the ten. Um he can he could shoot that, but he's gonna run the ball here back behind the eight, I think. It's gotta go. Oh, it does have to go. It's gotta go. You know. He was in a tough spot there, tried to make something happen, and uh not a really a tough run out here, of course. Look at the four to the five to the six. Oof. Do you like just slow spinning here off the end rail and up for the three? Just let the cue ball creep out. I'd probably check this with a hair inside. Oh, okay. Or or straight. Well, if I you guess can if you can do that, yeah, sure. Yeah, if you can use straight, that's fine Yeah, go also. with that for sure. I thought he maybe had to check it with I did too. Inside. I did too. I think you got to play below the five here to follow up for the six. To draw back off that five is maybe asking too much. So he has to get above the four where he can avoid the ten, go to the end rail, and sneak up behind the five just like that. Perfect. He's a little inside English mm -hmm. to get there. It's a little tricky, It's a though. little steep. Yeah, he's well, going to have to really spin it's just it. just because the eight. Yes. So oh, you don't yeah. want to shoot the five with a bunch of angle to come across. Right. So you have to be able to get by the eight with the cue ball. Mm -hmm. And you can't cheat the pocket or anything mm -hmm. trying to shoot the five. So I would have considered a bub, but, but he has to get really good on the five to yeah. know, not have the eight as a bother because he certainly doesn't want to shoot the five, like I said, with a ton of angle. Uh, that's just – See, I'll tell you see. what. I'll tell you what. I think this can work. This looks to me like he can follow forward and go in between the Ooh. eight nine really? and come right. It just. I'm thinking the cue ball tracks right through there to the six, right where he's pointing. Oof. Doesn't have to come off, but has got a chance. I think he's going to pound it. I don't oh. think he's going to go forward and take a chance of hitting the eight. Well, I guess he can it. still shoot from the eight, though. If anybody could pull that off, it's this kid here. But I think a smooth high ball, just like that. See how he kind of stunned uh -huh. it, though? Yeah, to get it to stutter step out to miss the eight. That's yeah. a good call, Jeremy. That's yeah. exactly what he did. I think he got a hair above the five to where he was going right into the eight. Mm -hmm. And the worst thing about going into the eight is the eight might carry with the cue ball and snooker. <laughs> yeah, that's One thing fun. to go into the eight and be able to see the six, that's okay. He's ducking. Yeah, I don't blame him. Uh oh, don't make it. I know how many times you've done that in life and shoot it right in there and hook yourself. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with being up 6 2 and leaving Josh this. This wins games. Very heady play. Yeah, this one here, he can't put as, quite as much speed as he would like. He can still maybe make it, maybe bump it off the end rail up a little. Nice oh, he shot. got through it. Got the cue ball to the end rail. Well, that's the key to kicking like <laughs> that, and that's the key to swerving into it, even when you don't need to sometime, sometimes. That way the cue ball will carry downward. If you just come across it naturally, it's going to cut the ball more, and the cue ball is going to come across the table. Yeah. So, like I said, even when you're, you know, you're not needing to swerve it, there he needed to swerve it because of the side pocket. Right. Sometimes you don't need to swerve it, but it's still the correct thing to right. do. That's exactly right. That's such a subtle thing to understand. It takes a lot of a lot of years playing pool to feel that, but that's exactly right. Boy, what a tough shot here. I like his chances. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the way he's playing, no side spin. You're going to make these sometimes. Not every time. Oh, here comes a safety. Well, oh, it, nope. <laughs> Pretty good. I think yeah. it cut him off the main. Yeah, I thought it was going to stop where Josh could stick him on the eight. Yeah, that's what I thought, They're too. both having a good laugh because FSR is, knows the balls are rolling his way a little bit. Yeah, I think the eight's got him cut off unless mm -hmm. he wants to grab it with a little inside spin. I don't know if he can make this ball. 
Yeah, it looked like it was going to overcut to me. It's going to get fairly safe here. Oh, real safe. Ten's in the way. Well, this is that distance thing. Mm -hmm. Now, what I well because I the might eight, kick behind. Right, this, huh? I I think so. Now, if he comes off this six ball, three rails down underneath the eight, but you're pushing the six over near the hole, possibly. Well, this is where you play it. Let it come up a little right unless you're gonna shave it right no i like letting it come up and leaving them a long time well, this shot. one ain't the worst one to shave though it really well, wasn't it wasn't it? the worst one to shave oh. just because you had everything naturally kind of working for you nice shot well if anybody can cut the paint off one it's this little monster right here you gotta make a great shot and avoid the scratch in the side this is usually, oh he's usually yeah, he's when he comes it. with it i know he's so good at these Three in the side. Ooh, oh, he oh. caught it a little thin, but safe. Now they're laughing. Yeah, they're definitely good buddies. You won't see a top player miss a ball and smile ear to ear too often. What do you think, Jay? Thin you got to shave it. Shave it. And just come bonus back. behind yes, the nine. Yes, yes, exactly. Exactly. Oh, he hit it nice. Ten foot away, your shot. <laughs> oh yeah, this yeah, is no, probably he go, might bank go this. Go yeah, in. try to bank it. It carries position. Could fluke it off the eight yeah, if, right. you, if you have to overcut it off the rail, That's off the right. side rail. I think he's supposed to shoot here. And sometimes it can hit the right side of the eight and then go side rail, end rail, and get safe. You got a few plays. He's kicking behind it, I think. Oof. Well, he was queuing to like do he that. Had to curve it to do that a little yes. bit. He comes in just naturally oh, behind yeah, it. It looks like he's going to. He's curving behind it. Oh, what a hit. Man, was that a great shot right there. He's going to leave a kiss shot on the eight maybe, but nothing. nothing yeah, easy. I mean. <laughs> yeah, FSR says nice shot. Taps his cue. Great sportsman. I kind of think banking the six back down to where the cue ball's at. Leaving the cue ball up there around the eight is about all you got, unless you see something better. Off the top of my head, I just don't no, see I, what else I you think can that's do. That's the, the shot. That's decent safety. Yeah. yeah. I'm wondering if I would kill the ball with inside though. Right, right. Anytime I can put I a little left, I like that. I think he's just floating it, not bringing the six all the way down, just using the, just oh. going for the snooker itself. Oh wow. Well, I'll tell you what. A little ah, much. Just a little. He's got a shot for a real tough shot, but. Uh, I think he can make it. I don't think it's that bad, is it? He's about a half diamond or so above the six. Huh? He's supposed well, to make this. Even yeah. it's, it's not a it's no, not a hanger, no, but I course, mean, you know, I think he's a favorite eighty percenter yeah. on this one. Nice shot. Tell how thin it was. So <laughs> yeah. Six barely crept in. Cue ball zigzagged some three and a half rails. I think he has to come across, play the nine in the same pocket. High left English. Very nice. Just two rails here. Josh doesn't use a ton of side spin most of the time. He'll, he'll use a little bit. But one thing he does is distance. A lot of players like myself and others, we want to get a little closer to the ball. Sure. So a lot of times closer to the ball means a little more side right. spin. And, and then so, things can go bad. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, it's just preference kind of yeah. thing, right? I mean, he just utilizes what he does real well, which is that straight shooting. You know, yeah. like if he's got a ball in the middle diamond, let's say on the right side rail, um, and he's got to get to a ball that's past the side on the left side rail, and then the third ball's back down table. Well, a lot yeah. of players will go with top inside and go side rail, in rail, two to side rail, and get that little bounce to get closer. Where he'll just come two rails to the head string and take that immediate angle, even though it's further away. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a beautiful thing, really. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. doesn't sweat it at all. He just gets down and, and knocks the balls in. Well, you know, I watch him play one pocket. Love the way he plays one pocket. I think his straight pull is fantastic. He adjusts his game, and whatever game he's playing, I mean, he's just so wise. His straight pull patterns are fantastic. Shot selections uh, I totally agree with, and uh, I have a pretty critical eye with the straight pull, and, and a lot of players run balls, but it's, you know, it's it's a little uh, low percentage, and he plays very smart, and he plays rotation very smart. He's just a great all-around player, and uh, I don't – 
I don't see any weaknesses. FSR Super changing tough. sides here. Now, that's the thing that Josh didn't do. He went immediately side row. FSR staying out in the center, but moving over to his right. Yeah, these are not breaking correctly. Mm. Now, I cut those a hair, but still, I just feel like it's time to get a fresh rack. Yeah, yeah, mix it up. Because last night, the balls were breaking great. All day? Yeah, all day they were breaking real nice. Let's see a push out here from Josh for... Fortunate for Josh, the one is covered up, so a little easier to push. I don't know if I take this. There's a lot of uh, the getting right. by the nine and seven and all that's very difficult. A lot of traffic. You know? I yeah. still think that's what he has to try to do: go two rails around the nine. But man, yeah. you can play the one though. Up. Just make yeah. sure the one's on the back rail right. underneath the three, and just take your chances if you get by the nine and seven. Right. That's yeah, all you can that's do. That's right. Yep, he did his job there. Now he'd like to kick this way. He can kick both side rails, whichever one. But you'll notice that when he hits the one, the cue ball is going to continue going forward, and there's no traffic there. If he kicks the other way, the three's in the way to get separation. This way, he can get some separation, maybe. Mm -hmm. if he caught it a little thinner. Got away with it. Look at this. Now you're rolling pretty good when you hook the guy there. That's... It's going to be a tough kick. Oh, no, he can go between the four or five. Okay. He figures to hit it. Yeah, he's trying to figure out what he can do with it. Uh -huh. Not much. Hit and hope. <laughs> yeah, Hit and glance and He'd run. like to come across the top and come down here with the cue yeah. ball, but he caught it full. He's going to be okay, I th Oh, wow. I think. hooked him right back. <laughs> They're smiling. That's good to see. Not good for Team USA to see these two guys getting along so well. I might have to go up to him and go, hey, did you hear what FSR said about you, Josh? <laughs> See if we can start a little rivalry right before December. Yeah, these two are going to be a killer combination out there in that Moscone Cup. And just to kick off the back rail, not a whole lot you can predict. And really you shouldn't because you may not get a rail if you hit it easy. Oh, he's going to think he's fortunate again. Uh, yeah, yeah I don't he covered he, him up. I, can't, he I don't covered think he's him got up. a wow, shot. they're both grinning ear to ear like, what is happening? These two balls have stayed near each other three kicks in a row and not one time a shot. I cannot tell what he's doing here. Wow, very smart. Played the one off the three to stop it. Good thinking. Didn't quite come off like he wanted, but that was smart. Do you like driving the one back down between the two five, right where he just put his cue, and leave the cue ball up behind the three four with yeah, a high I mean, left ball? That's about all you got, isn't it? Pretty simple. Yeah. Not too hard. Yeah, there you go. Nicely executed. And the good thing that he did there that you can learn from is he just rolled the ball with natural. Mm -hmm. uh, he could have tried to kill it a yep. little more, could have tried to do this, right. but what happens is you lose track on the one That's when you right. put that inside or side spin on the ball a lot of times. Yep. Now, sometimes it's needed to right, get the sure. snooker, sure. but if it's not... Oh, yeah, don't ball. do it if it's not. Right. Well, do you take a chop at this and run into the balls, or do you uh, knock it up table since you're ahead 6-3 and keep the looks, heat on Josh? I think if... You know, he's a little awkwardly stretched, so I think maybe he passes on this one, maybe. Uh -huh. He's got a lot of balls he can do something with. I mean, he can shave the one with side spin and come back behind some balls. Looks like he's going the other way. He's going to chop it on that end. 
This leaves a little nice. more of the Okay, he really held it. Boy, he did. It's going to get in the gap, though. Yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. It looks like he's driving the one out between the two five to me. Cue ball behind the ten. Yeah, pretty easy shot. Right? The only way you wouldn't do that is if you can't see enough of the one to do so. Mm -hmm. So he's not bringing the one up real far. He's just going to bump the one up three feet and cue ball over behind the ten, you think? Yeah. I mean, he might try and get it up further and come up on the ten, but I doubt it. Oh, I like that. Jeez, that was beautiful. Yeah, that one went narrowly and mm -hmm. right on the line by the two. Yeah, nice shot. Jesus Atencio stretched the lead to seven to three over Justin Martin. Alex Pagalain tied up at five apiece with Yanni Uski. Thorson Holman getting ready to tee it off at two o'clock hour. Give up much there. He could play the bank and accept the long cut on the two ball. I don't see too many safe opportunities here. I hate to shoot at a bank, though, that doesn't lead to the Yeah, he's thinking of running off the right side and coming down. Well, I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> I can't tell what he's doing here. Yeah, he's playing a nice little safe. Okay. Covered the one. Fortunate contact uh, on the uh, nine there. Catching it full, holding mm -hmm. the cue ball. Yeah, FSR and David both are so good at these kicks, meaning hitting them different ways to cut the one and bring the cue ball maybe to the side rail. See how he's done that yes. right there? You know, yes. just different ways to hit these, like getting the one. one to the back, trying to utilize the five, six, two, eight, and all that. So. Yeah, very nicely executed there. And they never overhit him, it seems mm -hmm. like. Just the right speed. Josh would like to go three rails off the side of this one, down behind the seven. One, two, three. Beautiful. Nice shot. Looking to go. I think the four is a little in the way oh, here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's he got to manipulate the cue yes. ball. Yes. Yes. Two little rails. Draw spin. Yeah, I think so. You can scratch off the back of this one so easy. Oh, he hit it perfect. Look at this. Ah. Uh, yeah, we're going to hook Josh. Nicely. Yes. I might be able to get through between the 8 and 6 <laughs> and the 10 and all that, but I don't think he can make it doing so. What a safety exchange. He can maybe kick it out. Yeah. Maybe that's a, catch a double kiss right. here. Don't think it's makeable. Yeah, like that mm, one-pocket shot. shot. Very one pockety. That was nice. And he's left a return. Not, not a make, but. He may have to shave this. Can he get to, right. the, to the left side or left I, side? Of I this? think so, Jeremy, because if he drives that one up, it catches the two. I think he has to try to get the cue ball behind the 10 and the one out by the spot. Ooh, I don't Can't, think he can do that. No? That's why I was saying I think he's got to shave it maybe. But Oh, okay. I think, I think he's making move. a full enough hit to drive the one out of play. Yeah, he was able to catch it full. Okay. Boy, he's happy with that result. He caught a lot of left yeah, side of it. Yeah, though. he had the full ball there. Of course, the players have a better perspective than we do, so we're guesstimating sometimes. But just trying to give the people at home all the options we can think of so that you guys at home can become better players and then knock us out of a tournament at a later date. <laughs> Oh, a little Good fluke. Shot. And the three covers him up. Wow. <laughs> well, if anybody can punch in this combo, it's this guy, but 
I think if it wasn't awkward queuing, he shoots at right. it. To be honest with That's you. That's right. Now I think he probably runs the ball. I like him running safe. I he's couldn't shoot the this. One. Back down. Oh, no, he's not. Okay. Yeah, he's staying composed, not getting frustrated, just shooting at everything. Very smart. Got to love it. These guys battling for that shot I know. on the one. Like 10 kicks at the one. That's about the first time I've seen anybody try to do that this whole tournament, just tie up a ball. Well, it's because the kick, you know, I'm surprised he did it there because very doable kick shot. Yes. Um, I, I understand agree. where he's what he's thinking and yeah, that one's a big ball, it, right? That one's yeah. a big ball set in there. He would have been a favorite to hit it. I was kind of well, surprised. He kicks. I yeah, mean, yeah. I, I think the hit was just kind of automatic, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. But I do understand what he's saying. But just in case Josh gets out here on a tough out. Makes it six to four, and uh, I think, I think maybe a little momentum at least in Josh's mind. Sure, you yeah, know yes. he can kind of turn the corner with his head a little bit, being a little more positive, looking at this match. Yeah, we'll see what the balls decide and how the break goes. But I don't think I fool around here. I think I just, I mean, if I get perfect, I might try to play short side on the six, uh, or maybe break it out. But the six eight's not that bad. Yeah, it's it's and the nine's kind of ugly being there with right. it. Right. Oh wow, that was interesting. Yeah, it's got to go. Now he's definitely going to play the six eight. I think, anyways, he yeah. could play a safety yeah, on the I, six. I, I, he could, yeah, you could. What I like to do here is I try to get on the six eight, and if I land perfect, then I go forward with the combination, and if I don't, then you duck. But take a chance at landing just right on it. Yeah, he can do it a couple different ways. He can draw off of this ball coming up the table back at the 6'8". He can chip it in with the inside, I think, coming across. There is a cross-corner bank that goes as well on the 6. Oh, yeah. It's not terrible. He's already buried a big one on the one ball earlier in this match. think he has to draw three rails oh he's cutting it he's cutting it one rail he's playing safe wow i did not see that coming me i really thought either. he would shoot that tell yeah, you what he did all right big surprise to me hard to question but yeah i mean it, well you know he goes with his gut feeling and then that's going to work for him uh it's done pretty well in his career but but uh i really thought he'd shoot that one I would have bet big money he was not playing safe there. He really, really um, confused me with that. But see what FSR can do from here. Soft kick, high right English. Oh, not. Well, tied up the eight to the six. That's not bad. Do you like the three rail safe out of here? Yeah, or would you dislodge right? the eight. And, di and move the eight. Yeah, you might come right up on the right, six nine. Right. Just slowly dislodge the eight. Not a lot Just of speed. Just like that. Yeah. I like it. Ooh, he hit that good. Nice shot, Josh. Yeah, he's going to try and bump the six a little bit here, I believe. Kind of painting himself into a corner mm -hmm. here. with. I like this shot. Just nudge the six out and, yeah. and, and make Josh have to maybe burn an inning, untying these balls. Ooh, that came out a lot. A little more than he wanted. Not bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's still got to maneuver the cue ball. Sure. I'll tell you, Josh may end up shooting a tougher 6'8". It's not that terrible with ball in hand. Mm -hmm. It really isn't. If you look at our overhead, John, uh, John that yeah. we have here in the booth, I mean, yeah. looking at the table. I mean, Yeah, sometimes you have to shoot shots like this. Not I don't think it's do. a tough shot myself. I didn't think the last combination was that tough. And this one with ball in hand, you should, he's going for the cross-side bank, it looks like. Cross-side bank, wow. 
That's okay. Wow, sure. I bet, I mean, he, he had to perfect land too. perfect here. Yeah, and he did. Yeah, and the reason why he had to land perfect is because the eight doesn't pass the nine. Right. So, and he may have not landed so perfect. He may have to push the eight a little bit here still. Nice Shame. shot. He can cheat the pocket and draw back here. Oh, okay. No problem. Rather than queuing over the 10 for the 9 on a little bit of a cut, just cheat the hole here. Very nice. What a nice tactical exchange between these two. I mean, oh. there was. Oh, okay. Cut it Lucky a little. Lucky that one went. Mm -hmm. He's happy that went down. What a game. Very interesting rack. Just joining us, I'm Jeremy Jones with John Schmidt. We're at the 2022 International. It's the Bigfoot Challenge, the 10-foot event. This is uh, one of our last two quarterfinal matches here to start day three. We'll get on to two semifinals after the quarters are complete. And then our final match this evening. Our defending champion still in it with a big comeback win last night over J.L. Chang, that being Alban Ocean. Yeah, that was one for the, the history books. What a match. We have one of Poole's dignitaries in the front row, Jerry Bryseth. He's being inducted into the BCA Hall of Fame in a couple of days. I'm real happy for him. He's a good friend of mine, great instructor, and player, and a friend to Poole, and we're lucky to have him. Yeah, Dennis Akulo is going to be inducted yeah. as well. Wow. Yeah, talk about deserving. Ugh. You could have half the career he's had and be in the Hall of Fame. I mean, that guy's won everything. Yeah, the big one still eluded him, uh, amazingly. Yeah, it does you know, seem a little bit that way. The, nine, the U.S. Open 9-ball and the World 9-ball Championships. Mm -hmm. SVB had a lot to do with that. He beat him, I think, two years in a row in the final in the U.S. Open. And then I think that Dennis did make one World 9-ball final, if I remember correctly. But really, I mean, he's, he won the World 10 Ball, of course, all kinds of events in different disciplines. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, the Derby City Classic events. Right. Yeah, unbelievable all-around player. I've seen him give spots to players that we'd consider pro caliber, really, like give them the 8-9 playing 10 ball and five games going to 21 and stick them up two or three sets in a row. And these are guys that are like 700 Fargo, like, you know, solid. Oh, no are, doubt about it. Like great good. player. Oh, right my now. goodness. Yeah, unbelievable. Well, he does not have much here. What do you like here, Jeremy? You see anything? Can, can he just simply roll this at the four and just drop the cue ball to the right of the five, trying to use the 9-10? You read my mind, champ. That's what I would have tried to I do. I would go for the simple yes. safety here, I think. Oh, he's two railing it out of there. or yeah, and Trying to kill the, the ball. Yeah, and that works, too. Put the two up by the... Yeah, uh, that works, too, doesn't it? Well, the game's just so much different when there's not jump cues. Yeah. Uh, you know, like certain safeties, you can take on a lot more simple stuff. Not so much worry. That's right. And I don't think jump cues are anywhere. They're not going anywhere. And I don't no. think they're supposed to go anywhere, to be honest no, with they're you. They're exciting. But yeah. Ooh. I thought he was going to get him stuck on the balls. So FSR, a big shot away from maybe getting a run started. Yeah, he's going to shoot at this. I tell you what, this is a huge shot in the match. Up 6-4, if he could put this down, really make a statement. And well on his way to winning the match. If he misses this, mm, now you got Josh Filler chasing after you right on your heels with maybe a one game lead. Big shot. 
And he's not only got to hit it well, he's got to hit the gap with the cue ball. <laughs> and he's got to put a little right, not a lot, but a little right English here. Such a tough shot there. Rolling well, though. Josh. Oof. Mm. Well, you think they're not buddies. Okay, I think he can overcut this and run the cue ball three rails behind behind uh -huh. the four or the nine ten maybe or something like Good that. Good call. That's exactly the right shot if possible. Super thin, tons of it just like oh, that. Yeah. Oh, he See, wasn't able to get No, I think he was trying it, to play it this way. Oh, like way. that? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Josh didn't miss his mark by no, that, by that no, much no. On, a, on hitting the object ball. Right. Usually, you know. Right. It's not perfection all the no. time, but he won't miss it by much when he does. Yeah, he made a nice shot there. And really, he's making him come with it again after he just missed another a long one that was a little easier than this. A little bit. Yeah, this is I think real he's tough. supposed to shoot, though. Yeah. Stun, stun towards the four, right? Yeah, I like shots where I know the cue ball is going to be laying over there against the rail if I miss. So, you know, if you make it, you're good. And if you miss it, they're probably uh, taking on a tough shot. Oh, boy, it doesn't get any tougher than this. Wow, what a shot. A little off angle here. I don't know. I may just drag this in. I'm, or if I can pinch it coming out and getting the angle, that's fine too. But the eight scares me a little bit. Sure. A little eight's bit. huge. If you overcut this a tiny bit and still make it, you could hook yourself. I like him to pinch this with bottom right, slide the cue ball out to the right 10 inches, just like that. Yeah. And he executed it incredibly well. He got the angle. He may go top inside here. Right. Two rails under the five and maybe. shoot the five in the same hole, maybe. The stun's there. Okay. I mean, it, it is definitely there. And so this one's just a little bit of preference, really. Like Josh, he's not doing top inside here no. for sure. He's just stunning over. Right. But FSR, I think he's on the fence with it a little. Oh. I, I, Ooh, I thought this might get a little. Heat. I like that because wow. it How makes well the pocket did. play bigger. I didn't you know? think it was easy. No. I didn't think it was doable. No, I thought I, he had too much angle. Yeah, it was right on the borderline. He hit it incredible. He hit it as full as you could hit it, and still almost got on top of the five, which you know, which is why you you not thinking it was available makes perfect sense. A little inside, just a hair. And that's what people don't realize also is when your stroke is better to get that effect right there, you don't need as much inside because your mm -hmm. top English, you know, works a little eyes. better as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, one of the most common faults I see for myself if I'm playing bad or people at home when we're trying to improve their game is they just don't follow through enough. When we mm -hmm. video them, they're stopping the tip right at the cue ball, and they think they're following through, and they watch the video and go, wow, I have like a quarter-inch follow-through. And these top players, you'll notice their tip goes through the cue ball, even right there, and went through an inch or two. Yeah. Well, that's because most amateurs uh, try to do try to manipulate the ball with the impact of the tip meaning like a hit. Yeah. So when you're a hitter, you're going to squeeze, uh -huh. your cue's going to stop. You're That's doing right. everything with a hit more That's than a stroke. Right. So. That's right. But it's easy to fall into that. I mean, sure. the same mistake happens with when when the pros are, are a little off. Oh, you know, yeah. They don't go through the ball quite as much. Uh -huh. They use a little more hit at impact to get yeah. things done. That heavy right hand kind of yeah. a rudder effect. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have a player timeout, so stay tuned.
Looks like we have the players back getting ready to break the balls. Score is, I believe, 7-4 FSR. Yeah, it should be FSR to break. Shooting an 859 clip, which is world class for sure. He's going the side rail wow. also. Wow. And took the subway. Drew it right in there. This is a manageable rack as far as, you know, I mean, as tough as this table is, this is a rack that is doable. Tough, but doable. Yeah. I mean, I not just like getting proper easy. on the four right. really is the main part. I mean, he's yes, got to work sir. the ball to the nine. He's got to do things, but mm -hmm. the first part of it is just getting on the four correctly. It's perfect here to come one rail out to the center. That way he can reach it and not have too much angle, yes. but enough to get back out to the center on the five. That's right. Just get right to the middle of the table here. Uh, this is an inch or two flatter than he would like, but I think it's it's going to work just fine. Come right to the middle again. Bottom, bottom right spin. Oh, nice shot. Yeah, he's got to make a nice one. Right. Here, he's really got to spin this one bottom left and avoid the 10. Uh, do you, do you go, go across? Yeah, the 6 is uh -huh. pretty cuttable from where he's I at. Agree. So I agree. But the thing is, he may have to go three rails back and forth uh -huh. if he goes with a high ball. If he goes with low outside. He usually sticks to the high ball here, Josh does. Yeah, yeah you're right. Goes across three times. Puts the cue ball right back where it is. One, two. Perfect. Well, this is <laughs> this is all you could want because you got to hit like this with some ends. Yes, I do too, Jeremy. Just a little inside. Yeah, he's cueing it a little bit of right. Just got one rail straight up above the seven. Up. Oh, yeah. It looks a little Oof. thick to me when I, I'm just sitting on the line. Mm-hmm. Now he's got to go into the eight. Yeah, this is a. Uh, this is tricky here. Josh, such a considerate young man. And right there, there was an older gentleman trying to take a seat. And Josh noticed him. And instead of make, yeah. making, a, making, a, making scene. a moment, yeah, right. you know, he, he just said, he oh, let, let me, me towel off. That's right. I use my extension for this man. That uh -oh. oh no! Oh my goodness! That is obviously a fan. Yeah, I've always felt like we're lucky to have somebody who wants to take our picture or come watch us play. Yeah. I never ever would scold somebody. I mean, because this room could be empty with no spectators at home, and we'd all be out of a job. So appreciate the fans, you know. Yeah, I mean, they have to come in and find a seat and open a bag of chips sometimes, and that you know. Well, I was some players though know, freak out about that stuff more than others. Yeah, and to be fair, I wasn't really trying to tarnish any other players on how they act mm -hmm. um, because the heat of the moment. Right. I think that's what the fans, the true fans, do understand. The heat of the moment, things happen. Yes. Um, but I was just kind of commending Josh right. more than anything that's right. that he recognized it immediately mm -hmm. and. He handled it nicely. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, like you said, instead of glaring at the guy, he just said, "Let me, yeah. let me just go towel off and." And uh, act like it didn't happen. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, he consciously did that, though. Mm -hmm. He reminded himself no reason to do this, you know, because he's in the heat of the moment as well. Right. And a big scratch yeah, there. Yeah, and, and a, a very four. frustrating scratch. Wow. Would have been very easy to scratch there and have jo and Josh scold the guy for setting it. Yeah, know, maybe look at him again right, or something right. like that. Yeah, and that's just from he got hit that six ball just a little thick coming down. Got a little steeper on the seven than he wanted. Mm -hmm. When you go into balls, it's just uh, hard to totally predict everything every time. You know, they do an incredible job of getting it most of the time, but it's just going to get the best of you 
Yeah, th those time, balls. Time I mean, they're they're not square blocks. You know, they they don't oh, yeah. they don't react like square blocks. And so them round pool balls can do all kind of funny stuff. And he took an educated guess, and it didn't come off that time. Big game. Now he's really got his back up against the wall here, down eight four, playing an incredible player who's firing on all eight cylinders. Uh, this again is going to be a miracle to get back into this match. But I said that last night with with the Chang match, and Albin Alshin just played incredible to steal that match. So Josh is going to have to pull off an Albin like performance here. Yeah, the difference is the break, though. I mean, I'm right. sure Alvin was breaking and making balls. And, exactly. And this is another reason why I think he's got to go back to have any chances is the side rail break's not really, like, producing great results. Mm -mm. And FSR is just too good for you to think, uh, you know, I'm going to get a handle on every game if we have to push out or if we have to kick or if we have to do this or that. Yeah. FSR is going to win his fair share in those kind of games as well. So I think it's got to be a break and run here and there on Josh's break to make this comeback. Agreed totally. I could see trying the side rail break maybe once or twice, but don't go down in flames with it. I mean, you got to start making three on the break and running some racks to have any chance. Yeah, especially when FSR has proven that, you know, tactically he can certainly handle himself. Oh, yeah, he moves good. Rotation-wise, he moves incredible. I tell you, does he, does he look at the five ball here? I know the one's a pocketable ball for sure. She sure. wasn't so elevated, though. The long rail bank on the five looks... Yeah, you know, as good as anything. That's what I'd shoot. He's, uh, he's not. He's leveling out, so he's definitely not shooting that. Wow, what a shot that was. Yeah, like I think FSR wanted to get that cue ball on the rail. Got to go a there. little. Nice shot. Beautiful. Big shot there for him to have any chance at all. He had to put that down. He has to get out here. I would go to the end rail with the cue ball here. Yep, that's that, right. That way, no matter where I'm going, my touch is going to be really easy. Whether I'm drawing up the side rail, I'm coming across, it, it does not matter. Yeah, that's right. Now he's perfect to drop behind the eight for the seven. Well, I was in the crowd the year you won the U.S. Open, and although you're known for your great one pocket, you played some high-powered nine ball. Your moving and banking has always overshadowed your shot making, but believe me, you shot as straight as anybody when you were in the mood to play pool. And, uh, and it was a weird month yeah. for me that month. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I'm from Houston. I'm from Texas, and I'm from the U.S.A., and that month, I went undefeated in the Houston Open, undefeated in the Texas Open, and undefeated in the U.S. Open. Oh, my God. That's, that's crazy, like, right? Well, it's like that's, a weird well, sequence sort of, of tournaments, that, right? And it's a kind of a testament to how great you played that, you know, because you yeah, can't accidentally Yeah, but where you're from get, all the way. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah, all the Texas yeah. stuff. Yeah, that's wild. And yeah, you were winning everything. I remember that. It was, uh, it was a crazy month. Really didn't Isn't have that, that good of a year. Didn't play as much. Uh-huh. Um, and just and, put it all together. Yeah, made the Moscone because of that U.S. Open win. Well, I guess. Eight to five now. Yeah, Joshua that was. Joshua Filler with a heck of an out from the end rail. Yeah, sure was. Well, the shot of the one ball, I mean, it was so That's difficult a, yeah. we almost didn't even consider it. We're looking at the combo, and he just smooths it in. Smooths it in down eight to four. That was on Josh's break, so definitely necessary. We'll see what FSR does with the break. Now, if I'm not mistaken, now when Kenny puts those eight in right there, then you give the whole eight of them a little nudge forward. A push, yeah. A little push. push yeah. well, 
Well, something consistent is happening because it's been a consistent dry break throughout this event yeah. uh, or uh, throughout this match, excuse me, uh, by both players. Oh, that was it. That was more oh, of it. Right and there the went the cue ball. Mm -hmm. And this is a, uh, a tough, as always, but runnable rack for the great Joshua Filler. Can he pull off a nice run out when he really, really needs it? Got to land on this two just right. Can you fall between the 4-6, Jeremy, you think, for the two on the side? Oh, yeah, ball in hand. Can he hand, do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it yeah. looks like he can. He'll just go the rail, right? I think so. Or maybe he's just drawing back and oh. he can just push this yep. in and be above it easily. Yeah. Little drag shot. That's like a mini drag. Mini drag. Ain't much to it. The tip wasn't real low. No side spin really involved. A lot of drag shots. Mm -hmm. Really trying to kill the ball extremely. So yeah. you'll use a little lower tip, a little bit more side spin to throw the ball in. Not necessary there. The straight drag is actually a huge tool if you can get used to it. But it's sure actually is. it's harder for me to pull the trigger on a straight drag than it is one that has a little side spin. Okay. For me, anyways. Yeah, now, I'm I, talking about a true drag shot. You know, the one he just played, that wasn't a difficult right, shot. I mean, right. it wasn't necessary. I'm talking about when you have to, you know, shoot one in a necessary really manner. Six o'clock cue to ball. to kill the cue ball. Uh huh. Yeah. Another nice shot there. A lot of spin, cutting the ball backwards. They make those shots look so routine. And he won't come back over here. He's going to come across. Seven doesn't pass the 10, so he's going to have to play for an angle. He needs to get to the good side of the seven. So right, so he doesn't have to hit the 10. That's exactly yeah. right. No Cosmo here, even though five balls is all. He tried to get across. I guess it was there. Oh, boy. He and he to... hit the five thick. Uh, yeah. So it was there to get across. Yeah. That angle deceived me. Yeah. And now very difficult to get on the good side of the seven. You may see him really run the ball to the short side for the seven in the side, I think, anyways. And that's where he was trying to comes, go with it. There it comes. And he's going to end up on a 7-10 uh -huh. combo instead, yeah. and he's going to shoot it. He's going to shoot it. He actually got darn near perfect on it. Big shot here to have any chance. <laughs> He's got to make this to go down 8-6. What a shot. Hugely important to make that. He's got a chance now. Now I'm going to watch Kenny rack these balls. And I'm going to see, I'm going to look for that little push. Maybe maybe the rack is designed where you don't have to do the push, or is it, it's the same, isn't it? I where thought you it do was that the little same nudge. The nine ball. Yeah. Okay, Okay. so we're going to watch him place the eight balls in there, and then you should see him push the, put a little pressure on all eight of them. But again, the rack might be designed where you don't have to do that now. I haven't had my hands on it. You know, right now he should grab all the. There he goes. There's that little, that little yeah, push. Yeah, but you don't have to squeeze them together. No, you don't squeeze them together. No, you, you just, just push on the forwards. two, six, five, and nine. That's right. Push forward, and then they kind of lock. So that's right. The oh. thing is, I've seen the rack uh, to where they're all froze, and it breaks like uh, terrible. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When you don't rack them correctly. I see. You know, a shot that I think he could play here, probably asking a lot, is to just draw off the top of the one, go to the side rail, and up into the forest of balls up there. The one kind of stays down here because it's hitting the two. 
Um, you wouldn't shave the one and go. Kind of I back like of that stand. too. You sure? I like that too. I actually like that more. That's what he's looking at, I think. I don't think he's looking but, at the kiss shot. Is he? no way. Yeah, he's just gonna graze off the one, just like you said. Well, the good thing is you can hit it as thick as you want with the two there mm -hmm. to get by the ten and then back on the ten. Yeah. Whatever's really necessary. Very good. And that's a, a yeah. very smart shot, not trying to come back on the 10. Right. Just get in the eclipse and go from there. Yeah. It's not the hardest kick, of course, and Josh should separate the balls here. Maybe make the one on the side, even. Wow, that's about all you could hope for there. Oh, that was definitely by design. Man, geez, yeah. He's going to have to swerve by the uh, eight if he can't see this one ball. Get to the side rail and at the one. I think, you know, I think he can go to the end rail and hit the one. Oh, well, that's better. I mean, if he's got a lane. the four Heck, five. He, he looks like he's shooting right at it. Yeah, he's trying know. to see if he has a piece of it. But, yeah, you're oh, right wow. about that. If he's got a lane. But, of course, you, you know, if you don't have that lane, you have to go to that side rail. No, the end rail is definitely yeah. better, and he has it. But he's got a piece of this. I so. guess so. He's trying to run the ball off of it like that. Oh, dang, he dang near cut that in. <laughs> Well, Josh has a has a chance to kind of get started here. Oh, he's perfect. This is about as much as you could hope for, yeah, he for being 10 feet away. He won't try to get too much. Just carry that angle here to pull yeah. the ball two rails between the 6-9 for the three in the same corner as the one. Four goes in the side. Key here is stay off that rail, the third rail. Get a little bounce. Yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Well, it's kind of needed, too, oh, really, to be honest shot. with you. What a shot. Perfect. Uh, he might come behind, play the four on the opposite side. There's two side pockets here available. He's got, yeah, that's what I like I right like there. It's just a little low left stun. Uh, he's going to go with a high ball by the five, it looks like. And that's fine. Yeah. Can't fault him there. No, I love the Either corners. one of those. If you're feeling good to play it in the side, fine. If not, here comes Joshua Filler. Like always. He's just one of those players that just seems like he either beats you to death or he beats you 11-10. I mean, it looked like he had—he was down 5-1, nothing going right. And here he is right in the match, putting all the pressure in the world on FSR. A little odd stretch for Josh here, mm -hmm. being the lefty. He's going to have to stretch from over this corner pocket. Yeah, look how far that six is from that pocket. I mean, it's like a mile-long cut shot. Mr. Josh Roberts. Nice shot. Table 10, Mr. Joyler. Mr. out there when he really needed it. Yeah. The TPA is tightened up along with this match. Yeah, it's hard enough to make runouts like that when you're at home, but to get up there and do it right now when you got to do it with all the money on the line is um, the stuff of legends for sure, and he sure is that. Yeah, eight to seven now. It's FSR's break. Mm -hmm. Alex.
Alex Pagalain and Yanni Uski at eight to seven with the lion ahead. Not sure if we have many more. Many more matches from the noon hour going. I think we do. Gotchi in a battle back there. Just playing another good player. I can't remember who it was. I can't get a look at their face just yet, but Oh, he's shooting a super long nine ball. Wow, what a shot on the line if he doesn't scratch. Yep. There goes the That's one. That's more of the rack. That's yep. more of the rack we need. Yeah. Huh? Boy, Josh doesn't want to see that. I never call a rack easy, but by this table's standards, this one's manageable. Yeah, but it's if, he tough. Can't, if he can't get on that bottom rail to shoot the three. <laughs> That's right. He's going to have a, a testy time getting, you know, kind of yeah. securely from the three to the five. Not saying it's yes. not doable, but if he's got to shoot from above that three the way it's hanging, that's a hard that's one to really judge. Very observant of you, Jeremy, and exactly right. And it's the key to running this rack. He'd like to get the cue ball. If he can get to the bottom rail, so he'll draw the He's cue perfect. ball, yeah. side rail, and right down to the bottom rail. And if he gets to the bottom rail now, the rack really opens up. He doesn't have to really get close to the five with the no. six near. Right. Just needs to get kind of straight on it. Six goes in the lower left by the seven. So don't want to hit anything. Don't want to make the seven harder. Ooh. That yeah. makes a little difference. That yeah, sure does. Okay, I just creep this one out. Don't like the rail first since my cue ball stuck on the rail. That always mm -hmm. is a little distorted, right? Mm -hmm. You can play rail first from there, but it's not easy. I got away from him. Oh, good shot. Boy, that almost got away from him. There. Yeah, he drew off of it. I would have uh -huh. rolled off of it, not worrying about distance too just much. Just taking the longer shot. Yeah, I mean, I would have got to the nine. You yeah. know, I would have been straight on the five about where the nine's at. Because the five, the six goes in the lower left. It has, has both sides as well. Yeah, and if he hooks himself there, he that, that would be. He, he, he's on the wrong side of the six. He's going to have to spin it with top inside. The rail. The rail, John. Oh, boy. Could hurt with oh, the 10 being this there. This is a killer. Makes it, it goes from like a routine out to a nightmare. Yeah, and that all is from just getting a little on the bad side of the six when you have to juice it. Sometimes your speed can be off. And if you asked FSR, he just got into that too much. Mm -hmm. That's all, but it does happen. He's going to have to take more of a shot on the eight. The way he's playing, though, man, this is the guy to punch in the long eight right now. He is feeling so good. Pocket looks a foot wide to him. I can't even hardly think of a ball he's missed this whole match, really. All the games he's lost have been uh, kicking or something, but he hasn't missed hardly anything. Well, he'll do well to make this ball jacked up like this. Good shot. Well, that was Good all shot. about being natural. He didn't want to be goofy on the eight That's where he's right. going to the left side of rail away from the nine and maybe has to put top on the eight yeah. go up table to come back or stun it with the side pocket there. That was a very handy, smart yeah. shot. Yeah, gave him the right angle to shoot the eight. Exactly. Add, he added like 10% more difficulty on the make to get the problems fixed. Like yeah, a, very a lot less stress shooting this eight yeah. ball than a little straight or going the other way. Yeah. Oh, just a huge shot. Now he's left Josh near the rail. We're getting position on the nine. Not routine. You can see Josh shake his head like, hmm. He's good at this one, though. Yeah, he has to super spin this with left slow and then take a cut on the nine. No, I think no? he's going to go straight top and stroke the ball to the Oh, and go three side. rails? Yeah. Actually, I mean, he'll I like do that, that on the nine foot a lot. I like that. I mean, he'll do, I mean it only doesn't really require, but... Maybe an eighth of a tip of left, not much. Now, if he's going on the right side of the ball, he's doing what John said, just taking what he 
Oh, he well, he did what I said, it. but he almost missed it. I actually like your option better to come three rolls down and make sure you make the eight. Yeah, you won't figure to miss the eight very often, don't I? I didn't know he could get that much on. Man, I, well, he hit it so heavy too. Yeah, he got, mean, it went he, through it. Yeah. Right? Wow, FSR is feeling the pressure now. He's got one of the best players on earth. Eight eight. What a match. Yeah, I think my whole speech about getting 20 to 1, being down 5 to 1, <laughs> I'd be, like every match somebody's down 5-1 and well, the other guy comes back and wins. Well, it was like when yeah. we first started going to a lot of alternate break tournaments, um, Corey was the funniest. You get him down four to one. And he's ready to just go play oh, golf. Oh, he's man, done. he just start swinging at it. And yeah. Sometimes he'd swing himself back into the match, not even trying to look at position or right. anything like that. You know, he just thought he was dead. And I, yeah. was, I kept telling him, of course, not when I was playing him, but <laughs> outside of that, well, how did you get down four to one again? Right. The other so guy won. You broke half yeah. those games. Yeah, you know, right, like, right. so, I mean. It can be done. Yeah. Look at other sports. Yeah. I mean, they, don't, they don't play it like that. They, if you score, you give up the ball. You know, like, mm -hmm. so it's just a matter of how strong your mind is, I think. Earl Strickland sitting in the crowd over there watching matches, and you hardly ever see that. He's always just, like, up in his room and comes down right before his match. But he's been he's been sitting over there watching for about an hour. Yeah, I saw him this morning. He got his 800 sit-ups in. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. I yeah. saw him. Uh, he was heading out for some breakfast, I think. Mm. He didn't make a ball in the break, finally, Filler did. So some things changing here. Um, just talked a little bit about his match last night. He felt good about it. He said yeah. he just made one mistake to maybe go up 8-4. to four. And the guy that he played uh, from Chinese Taipei, a well, mm. strong player. Mm -hmm. I mean, the guy played super good. So... Now he could coast the, you know, if he can't get at the left side of the one to cut it, he could coast the one a couple rails, behind the, you know, eight and three, trying to do something like that. That's yeah, what, that's he, all he could do sometimes. Yeah, he had to cut it though, and mm -hmm. that didn't agree with trying to, you know, get the cue ball how he wanted. So. Now, do you like do you like banking the one back to the end rail thin and letting the cue ball run two rails up, kind of behind the two four? Doesn't that mm -hmm. lay right? I thought he or, can maybe shoot at this, maybe. Maybe, maybe shoot not. at this bank and get maybe on the not. two on the side or something. He's going to chop it. He's yeah. going to chop it and run the cue ball two rails up behind the pink and the two, yeah. like you said. Yeah, I like that. Yanni Uski and Alex Pagalon, eight apiece. Payne McBride making a, a comeback, even though he's not at the table against Alexa Pacelge. He was down nine to three, now nine to six. Wow. Kids really improved. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's who he's playing back there, Kachi and Imran Majid. So. Oh, there's two great players. Perfect, perfect. Uh, Come gonna, on, that's go. That's a mistake no. there. He hit yeah, the one he got it out too. Thick. Oh, yeah. he did, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, very tough. I don't think you can really try to cut. Well, you can cut this in, but your cue ball's going into the eight and ten. I mean, uh, what do you like here, Jeremy? Do you think he'll duck here? Uh, yeah, it probably I, shaves yeah. off the his left side of the one and runs the cue ball. Look how oh, many he balls. He shot it. Well, he shot it right in and got almost perfect shape. Wow. Man. Bottom right English here. You gotta you gotta get just right can, on this three to be able to avoid it the nice, ten. Though. Yeah. Well, the thing is, he's not trying to get back down, John. No. He'll draw over there and take the cut. You know what I'm saying? Now, yeah. if he gets to where he can follow down, that's fine. Yeah. But if he gets too steep, he, that's the point of Josh Filler. <laughs> I like following this two rails right yeah. near the side pocket, just like, oh, that's even better if you can do that. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Yeah, he, he doesn't try to get way down there. No. He knows the angle's his friend, as he long as it's not too, it. too thin. And yeah. he just really gets in groove, just keeps yeah. making shots. You know, it's the game. He does it, you know, the, the basis oh, of the yeah, game, pocket sure that does. dang ball. Sure does. 
big rack here, a chance to go ahead, 9-8. You can see the urgency on his face. He is bearing down so hard. take his first lead. Mm -hmm. He surpassed him on the TPA last game. And now it's going to surpass him on the score line. And be breaking the balls in the next. Boy, was that a nice out. I wouldn't doubt if he goes back to the center, even though he's going to look at it like, man, this side rail got me back in it. But really not. It was FSR right. actually making a few misses that we yeah. didn't see at the early part of the match. You know, FSR beat him to the shot quite a few times. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Some good ones coming up, that's for sure, both winners and loser side. The one loss side round at noon, Anthony Maglino beat Mika Doherty 10 to 1. Jesus Atencio up 9 7 over Justin Martin. Sullivan Clark over Joey Tate 10 to 7. Joey, a, a really nice event, even though I know he wanted to go further. Francisco Candela a win over Raymond Linares 10 to 3. Raymond's been playing great too. Michael Schneider over jo Jomex Garcia 10 to 6. Yanni Uski, 9-8 over Alex Pagalina at the moment. So he's on the hill. Alexa Pacells did go ahead and take it off at 10-6. Nice tournament for Payne. Yeah. Eklund Kachi, 9-7 at the moment over Imran Majid. We'll let FSR break the balls here. Yeah, it looks like, looks like Kenny's figured it out to me. Wow. And that's what I saw in the last time FSR broke. So... The filler gets a chance to break again. Hmm. You try to send this two rails down between the eight nine and the cue ball down under the six, maybe. Who Great broke the last game? I know FSR just broke here, but I could have swore he broke the last. Hmm. Didn't he win the last? Yeah. Didn't FSR I win the last? No, Joshua won the last game oh, to go ahead. Nine, no, the eight. lag. The lag. Oh, the lag. Um, gosh, I cannot remember, Jeremy. Bringing him behind oh, the seven. Nice shot. I'm sure, these guys are on point. <laughs> really, very nice good. Table. Long Lin Chang, Tyler Starr defeated him ten to two. Mika Emin and B Koo. 10-8. Yuri oh. Viraranta and Maximum Lechner are going to tee it off here soon. That's the, that's the 2 o'clock matches. We'll get at those here I think in a next, little bit. Next here in this Bigfoot is Jason Shaw and... Is it Fetter? Oh, my goodness. What a match. Clash of the Titans. He wants to go two rails because he feels like he can cross this or hit underneath it. Either one and get some separation. Wow, what like a Like that, shot. see the underneath, what a right? Shot. Huge kick. And he's thrilled with that as he goes back to his chair. FSR taps the table. Sportsmanlike as usual. Probably going to use the 10 here, the 10 and the 6 somewhat. Well, you know, and I agree with that spin. shot. If you were ever going to shoot a bank, he's not going to. But, man, that five set in there has helped, helps quite a bit. I like this, though. Let's just do this. We can do this every time. Let him have nice a little of the top, though, I think. Oh, can you see it? Yeah, he may oh, go behind the eight here. Uh, that's a game changer if he can see it. Yep, that's what he's looking at. I don't know what he can do as far as moving the paint much. There's a little more side rail there, of course, on the 10-footer than the 9-footer, but mm -hmm. this could get a little touchy trying to move the pink. Oh, he hit it oh, really he hit sweet. it like unbelievably perfect. 
<laughs> He's so tough. So tough to play. <laughs> He's asking, I think, about the jump cue. To be honest with you. I make sure there ain't no jump cues in this event, right? <laughs> right. A little smile walking away. <laughs> Well, Josh is a big favorite from here, ahead 9-8, and he has his, his man hooked here. FSR has to overcome quite a deficit from this position. Yeah, you know, kicking before the side with Swerve here is not terrible, but you're coming into a small ball. I might go the other side rail here. Mm. I might go side rail, in rail, underneath the 10, coming up at the 4. I could just kind of feel like that's your better percentage. Yeah, either place tough, but you want to go with the best percentage now, play. Now, he took off his extension, so that tells me he's going for the swerve. Uh-huh. That's what I'm guessing in uh, That's right. Big swerve as well. Going all out for the make. Oh. Oh, what a shot. <laughs> what a nice shot. I don't think he's going to like his next shot, but that's all he had. Well, that's kind of like the soft kick sometimes yeah. makes sense. You don't you don't understand a soft kick to a bare part, side of the table. It looks like, oh, you're just giving up. The only yeah. way you can go is making it. Uh -huh. But those balls get on top of each other a lot to where you're not giving up much of a shot sometimes. Efren is the one that clued me into that. He'd kick at the bare ball, you know, where it's near the pocket and not that hard. And he'd end up on top of it some kind of way, mm -hmm. you know, to where you had to play kind of a goofy safety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he limited you with yeah, what you could do. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, and he it, was the master It made of that. sense to me after I watched him do it a few times. Yeah, we called him the magician for a good reason. We had about a 25-year test sample to make sure that that nickname was appropriate. Look at this. Oh. Well. Well. He's left him a bit of a shot. Yeah, it does go. It goes. A little is... awkward cueing. Looks like Jesus Atencio has taken it down, so we're going to lose Justin Martin. Won his first match, and then, of course, last night, everything was difficult. Didn't matter who you were playing, on sure. what table. Well, he wants to avoid the nine here. Yeah, but what he'll do, ooh, is he looking at going up and down? No way. A lot of times, Josh don't mind the little rub on the nine, to be honest with you, and just shoot the six from further away. Oh, he oh, played it man, thin this then. This thing got super thin and away from me. Yeah, it's playable. You have to shoot your little nine-footer here on the wrong side of the six, tree topped over the nine. Other than that, no problem. This is difficult, even by his standards. Oh, yeah, he's tree topped. This is super tough, and he's spinning this. Yeah, not a whole lot of spin oh, though. Not this, a whole lot. He'll like a, like I said, like a half tip of right. Yeah. He won't he won't apply a lot. Cause what Josh knows is if I get a little long on the seven, I can still work through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rely on his talent. Mm hmm What a shot. Yeah, the crowd acknowledges that great shot smartly. Yeah, you can pull this past the side, just a straight low draw stroke. Straight low, you can really cheat these angles. Oh, he let up. Mm, he let, did up. let up. Occasionally, even, you know, he has a little quicker tempo, and the backswing gets a hair quick on him for him. Yeah, you know, right. for, for his, his, for his, for his, his spectrum style. of exactly. what you consider his tempo. You know. Right. And now he's just, I, don't, I doubt he goes down with the bank. Right. i got to believe he's going to cut it and try and bump the nine some kind of way. Oh, what a shot. Never mind. Well, what a shot. You don't make the ball check very yeah. often on that shot like that. Not straight up and down, going back and forth. Right. You make a check all the time to come one rail down or maybe one and a half rails, but not to go all the way back. I wish. I don't think I've ever shot that shot the way it laid right there. That sounds crazy. but You should see Pia Filler, Josh's wife, where she's on the edge of her seat, oh, hands she folded. Gritting her teeth watching this, pulling for him. She's a sweater, wow. that's for oh, sure. Yeah. Let, let's get another look at that, that eight ball, was it? Really unique yeah, shot, what a something you're not going to play very often. I believe here it comes. Yeah, look at this angle. This is a ton of check right here. 
Oh, yeah. He hit this with inside English. I mean, what a great shot. That's a hard enough shot just to make with a high ball, but to hit it with a full tip of inside, yeah, hats I'm, off. I'm probably somewhat easing that with a hair outside, trying to just catch just a little right, portion of the just nine Just trying to make out. the eight, yeah. Figure to make the eight. I mean, he made the cue ball travel 20 feet with inside English. Um, just fantastic. A, you know, and it wasn't as thin as no. he made it look. No. You know, that ball was up. That was, you know, like half ball hit almost. Yeah, that was truly fantastic right there. And again, a shot you would never practice. That's the amazing yeah. thing about pool in comparison to some other Q sports. Unlimited shots, really. Oh, yeah. A trillion different things you could do. That was um, that was world class right there when he really needed it to. Well, let's see if this side rail break is going to help him out some kind of way. Hasn't really produced shots. It did produce a 1-5 combo, but not easy position. Right. Yeah, even if you make this, I don't you got to go it. into the right. three to have any with inside and, and, and then hope the one bounces out. Well, if you glance the three th a little thin with inside, you may end up with a hair of a cut shot on the one. Uh -huh. But the main thing is you're not getting away from the one, getting snookered and all that. You right. know, you can play a safety from there. I don't think he can hit this with like a low right coming back yeah. towards the pink. If the three wasn't there, yes. Right. But not with the three there. I think he's got to go one route into the three. I think, anyways. Backwards just doesn't look too appealing. And the key to this, if you're going into the three, don't baby it. The three's slowing you down anyways, right. so you don't miss the ball when you when you don't baby it. You see how he kind of let a little lighter. Ooh, I can't believe that uh, fell. I got hooked on the 10. A little unfortunate there. That's hard to figure to get right there behind that 10 without hitting it. Boy, the momentum has switched. And, of course, Josh has earned that through some great outs. And FSR has had a couple little bobbles. Boy, I'll tell you what, this is a small ball kicking this way. I might would go to the end rail here. I know you want separation, but I don't like giving up ball in hand. Yeah, he's just betting he can hit it. Oh, though, that right? was a nice shot. Yeah, he, he still was... gave up a shot, though, I think. Yes, I think he did. And the two's right there. If Josh makes this one, he's a he's a decent favorite to get out. Huge favorite. Yeah. Huge favorite. A little bit of cue ball movement from the six to the seven, but that's about it. One ball, two in the side, three stop, play the four. Stop your ball in the four, whether you play it in the corner or the side, then you use a little natural angle to come off the six around the seven. Yeah. Should definitely get out here. This freight train won't be stopped. Not, not, not in this match, anyways. Surprised he didn't come back just to come for the side on the right. four, but I like the corner. Myself. Yeah, I mean, you're stop, you're, you're perfect. Stop, stop. Yeah, right? stop, stop. I'm a big fan of stop, stop. He might choose to go around the seven if he feels the seven's too sharp in the side. Go high left English, three, uh, two rails around the seven. He needs it to bounce up a little bit to get straight. Yeah, perfect. Very nice shot there. Made that look easy. Well, natural. Mm -hmm. Always helps you make it look a little easier. Yes. Helps your... Helps your outcome tremendously. And what a performance by Josh Filler being down five to one in the match. I thought they both played great. Yeah, FSR played great. Yes. I mean, a couple shots he'd like to have back. That's just about every match you play usually, mm -hmm. especially on a ten footer. Yes. Got a little past what he really wanted here, but I don't think he's gonna work the rock. I think he just takes the shot. Well, Jeremy, it's been an absolute pleasure and an honor working with you. And um if Josh makes his 10, he moves on to the semifinals. Not over yet. I've seen these missed. He's going to bear down and focus here. Great shot. So, a former U.S. Open champion.
takes down the reigning U.S. Open champion, so we had to lose one of these greats. But maybe the best in the business moves on from Josh Filler. It's all about opinions and who you like and how they're playing. But for AccuStats, the international, we got more coming soon. I'm Jeremy Jones, and for John Schmidt, thank you very much. See you soon. That's right.